Well, I'm just going to do that thing where I hit it right now. Do it. And say, and breathe loudly into the microphone. Let's hopefully edit it out. Sorry about that. <clears throat> I was trying to say, but I had to breathe. Son of a bitch! That uh, this episode is brought to you by our patrons like Ahanga Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Denton, and Nestor Flores. And if you like what we do and want us to do some more, yeah. you can consider supporting us on Patreon because you can get access to episodes early. You can get access to the audio version downloadable. Maybe you can join us live, you know, and listen to Lucky shout and scream and swear. And uh, it really helps us out. Thanks for your support, everybody. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. Also here. <laughs> I fucking um, stepped on the phone cord and just ripped right out of my computer. Rip. Well, not my microphone cord, but my my um my headset's one of those combined cords for um head and mics. Yep. So I stepped on it, and both on my computer, I was like, "No, why?" Also, if oh, anybody no. has uh listened to Let's Talk FGO and heard or not, uh, at least on my end, which is where the recording is based, Lucky does sound a little robotic right now. Man, we've been having this issue since yesterday. We're not really sure what's going on. Yeah, I've like switched our servers around a little bit. I don't know. I don't know if there's like burns on the system or whatever. I don't. Eh, whatever. Eh. It. What happens happens. You can most of the time you can infer from context clues. And if he like utter, if the internet connection utterly slaughters something that Lucky is saying, I'll be like, Hey, can you repeat that? Because I do that all the time when we're doing gaming and stuff. Uh, speaking of gaming, also, by the way, hey, this is What's Up. Hi, I'm Omega. He's lucky. <clears throat> but uh, there were a couple of things I really wanted to briefly hit on the old RPG section, if you didn't get enough of that from last episode. <laughs> oh, we're not going to talk a lot. Hour and a half of table talk. So, uh, first, I just, you know, basically some stuff came out and Ori's announced. Um... I don't think I mentioned it last time. I don't even know if it was uh, up when we did last, but uh, the PDF for the uh, cyberpunk setting of Genesis Android, which is uh, Genesis is Fantasy Flight's generic version of their Star Wars RPG, and Android is one of their IPs. Uh, it was previously tied to the, now sadly defunct, but uh, before that still cool-sounding uh, Android Netrunner card game, because uh, Netrunner was a thing with Wizards of the Coast. But anyway... That PDF finally came out after literally like a month after the hardcover came out. Uh, dear FFG, stop that shit. Oh yeah, I'm I'm literally not going to buy your hardcovers. I will buy PDFs, and you will like make less money <laughs> ever by the delaying them. If they came out at the same time, maybe I would go. Oh, that's cool. I'll I'll buy a hard copy. That looks really nice. No, I'm gonna buy just PDFs. You they you you will not do this weird nickel and dime. Oh, we're worried about piracy. We want to make sure all the friendly local gaming stores get their revenue in first. No, listen. The buy at your game store is a cult, and they will continue to demand you buy at your game store. Uh, so you're Didn't you actually buying like the physical copy of Legend of the Fire Rings, though. No, you did. Oh, I did. I thought you did. No, I thought you PDFs. bought something. I've 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 bought the PDFs. But that, that's why I'm constantly lamenting the fact that they make me wait like a month. The book is out. It's in people's hands. But us digital customers are boned because, like I said, I don't know. Maybe they're, they're got a thing for piracy. If you are a consumer out there and you're getting, like, shanghai into their their sales numbers of being like, you know, oh, well, I can't wait for the PDF. I'm going to spend an extra 25 bucks on the hardcover. Don't. Stop that. That You're encouraging bad behavior. Dead trees are a thing of the past, bro. But I like dead trees. I mean, I, I they're okay for the aesthetics, but like I said, I don't, I I don't like the extortion of it. Mm. You know, it's like, I like yeah, as a as, as like as a media, like I like I, I still like paper media because uh, yeah. uh, for I one, you don't need a fucking paper books because <laughs> uh, like for one, you don't need a fucking battery. You don't have to charge it. You just need like maybe a good light source. And there's just something nice about, like, looking over to my shelf and looking at all these books and all that added to me. Yeah, I mean, like, um, I've bought, uh, even though the, the, oh, well, they were on drive through Fiction, which was kind of weird, I thought. But, like, the, the Legend of the Five Rings novellas, I bought those in print. But that's because they're novellas and they're small, and so they're not, like, super expensive. And 
you know, it was really cool to just sit and read them. And I've bought other stuff recently, like book books in paperback and stuff. It's just like I said, I don't, I don't like the the idea that they're holding back on the digital version, which obviously for gaming products is way easier for me and way less expensive than, you know, hard hardback three hundred page books. Um, so yeah, I I just like I said, I don't like the idea that they're holding out for whatever they're, you know, they're trying to milk that higher profit margin. Especially since know, I feel like I they don't need it, it because it. we post about this in games, but uh, apparently based on surveys to um, buyers and sellers of RPG products, Legend of the Five Rings was like number two under Dungeons and Dragons uh, in the fall of last year. So, like, you're making sales, guys. Well, again, it's one of those things that, you know, we always say, we don't know what's going on on the business end. Yeah, I know. Like I said, they probably have some. They probably have some sales projection. That's why. That's why I. I'm telling consumers also don't don't do that, because like, they, I'm sure they have sales projections, which is like, oh, so if we if we release the PDF right away, like fifty percent of our customers just buy the PDFs because it's more convenient. But also, gamers are impatient. So if we delay the PDF, then we can make them buy the like I said, the twenty five dollar extra hardback more often. We can convert like. 10 or 15% of those guys, and it doesn't hurt our overall sales, but I'm just, I'm just making a personal pledge. That, and, like I said, I have this weird response. I've heard a lot of people because, um, with their physical copies of the book, Fantasy Flight is also offering pre-orders of stuff for their Legend of the Five Rings, because that's the next thing I want to go into, which I think we touched on last week, but I don't remember. They're doing a, um, a Castles and Courts focused book called Courts of Stone, which was announced already, which is really neat that they're you know, announcing those source books and having them come out at a pretty high clip. But um, the it comes with a pre-order bonus, which is a little weird for, like, RPGs, right? But mm-hmm. they're I'm assuming they're trying to drive sales to their digital store. Um, oh, but I hear so many people are like, don't do this, support your friendly local gaming store, don't pre-order from this. And I think to myself, like, wow, I don't, I don't like how you're casting that as, like, Satan because I usually buy PDFs off something like DriveThru because... They're RPGs. Like for um for miniatures I mean, games or card games, when you if you need the space or they run tournaments and stuff, I can totally understand that, right? Support the place where you, you play. But I run RPGs online for people and it's like I don't I don't like the implication that because I don't shop at the quote unquote friendly local gaming store that like buying from other outlets is evil. Like I, I just like I said, I called it a cult earlier. I don't I feel uncomfortable with how strongly people project that image about all kinds of products, including RPGs, because, dude, who the fuck plays RPGs at their game store? Well, like, that's, I that. I mean, I'm way too uh, social anxiety for that, no way. Maybe if you had, like, a back room with a closed door, but, like, just out on the gaming tables? Like, miniature stuff, that's sure, that's fine, that's not, like, a whole thing, but, like, yeah, I wouldn't run games at a game store, I'm sorry. I'd I'd suck it up and put you on my kitchen table. <laughs> well, like I, there's actually um, in my area there major um, there is the gaming store hub, which is known as the Gatrix here, and I've been going there for years. But like and like it has like it's it's the whole nerd community, but I've never really like, been. How do I want to say this? Like, um, I'm trying to think. Hang on, I gotta pause. Um, I've never been. So like enamored that I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do all my business here. No, I'm gonna do usually what is the most convenient and easiest for me. Yeah. When I want to go buy a hard copy book, and like, like, um, like the Legend of the Five Rings book, that was li- that was literally an impulse buy. Literally, I was in the game matrix. I was all like, do 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 do, and like, oh, look here, here's Legend of the Five Rings. Oh, make us really into this. It was really, I'm gonna buy it and you know support the fucking industry because that's. That's like, um, actually, now that I think about it, that, might be something else. Because, like, you're saying, like, I'm not, I'm trying to, I'm not trying to say that, um, people who buy, um, the hard copies are, you know, like the true fucking fan. But that's something else you can say to do when you buy a hard copy. You, when you buy like the more expensive product, you may say that, you know, I'm supporting this fucking industry. Yeah, and I mean, there's, there's the usual layers of sales, right? Like you're, yeah. you're paying the heightened price on your end because you buy from a game store, who bought from a distributor, who bought from the publisher, kind of thing. Yeah, and that goes, you know, down low. You know, support you're supporting the store, you're supporting the industry, you're supporting all that. Like but I said, I, to- that- I can totally understand that if you have a, a, a comfy gaming store product but like i said i don't 
like there are people who are seriously throwing shade at Fantasy Flight yeah. for trying to make direct sales from their website through pre-orders, yeah, no. right? Yeah, no, don't throw shade because it's like, as I said, like, because remember, well, you know, support the game's turn. Fantasy Flight is still the fucking ones who made it in the goddamn first place. Yeah. They should have, like, like, they should, you shouldn't, like, force a company to go through a third party to sell their product if yeah. they can think of an easier way. I Everything mean, like, costs fucking money. Yeah. And the I times mean. are a changing. It's and, like, like, I can't throw storage shade about costs people. a lot. Like, um, Fantasy Flight's merged with Asmodee, who's a big game distributor. So they should have more storage space and easier access to it. But storing stuff for a long time takes a lot of money, right? Like, you need yeah. to rent warehouse space. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's probably why they're taking pre-orders like... is because they they need to know, hey, how much of this stuff do we need to store and sell to consumers ourselves? So they're encouraging you, like, to get pre-orders because they want to know stuff. And obviously, you can place pre-orders with your game store. But just like I said, I, for RPGs especially, because I don't think of the game store as, like, the hub of RPGs. But maybe that's because I, I have always been in some more isolated areas when I started this hobby. So I, I didn't always have a friendly local game store to go to. That's why I started gaming online. Uh, when you get here, I will introduce you and you can see how you like it. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I've, I've seen them before. Um, I've taken people to them and I've like bought dice and stuff at them. It's just like I said, for, for RPGs, I don't, I don't see the, the FLGS as like the, the hub. If I was active in my local scene in like X-Wing, Sure, I'd be going to my friendly like store, that. and I'd probably be buying releases there, even though they're like five bucks more than Amazon. But that's just because, like I said, that's what you do to, for the play space because that requires like a table and setup and stuff, and you can't run tournaments out of your house or whatnot. So, for also, sometimes they have props and shit like mm-hmm. it's fun. It's like well, yeah, that's another and... thing. Like for um Star Wars Legion, which I is a game I love, but I can't play any on anything other than tabletop simulator because I don't have the time and money to buy it and paint it and stuff. Uh, because I'm, like I said, I'm not into my local scene, really. But yeah, that like, that requires terrain, so that's like, yes, stores are great for that. A little loud. I guess that's what, I guess that's what, like, local, down. what a friendly local game store is. It helps, it's for community, I yeah. guess, would be the word. Like, for, for the Legend of the Five Rings card game, oh, no, totally. But, like, uh, and I can even kind of understand how, because they're also doing, like, this, they're doing, like, special bookmarks and promo art, usual pre-order package stuff for, uh... Uh, for like their car, their living card game releases, so I can totally see being like, eh, I don't know if I want to do that, like because I want to support my game store where I go to play this game on a regular basis and ha- where I'd go to play tournaments. But like I said, for RPGs, it like, like I said, I don't like people throwing shade because that feels like it's an attack on me because like I don't, I don't buy the RP. Like I'm gonna wait, I will suck it up and wait the month until they release the PDF on drive through because that's just. I'm go- I want to buy all these, so that's much more economical to wait the extra time and be like, get it on a slightly budget price. I give you FFG the money directly to continue making this product, but I'm not giving you my money until you do the thing that I want in the form I want. Yeah, that was just my thoughts, and I, I think you had good points too. Like, like, because I, I don't there's play no, Devil's Advocate. No... Basically, I don't want to sound like I hate you no, no, if you like, play at a game store. The end, and there's no fucking perfect solution. There are different types of people who want different types of products. Mm-hmm. It's like, and honestly, like as I said, like at the end, of the business end where they have projections, where it's like, where it's like we need to print like so many books so we can make an overhead, and if we just do it through digital, we might not make those numbers, so we try to force some things out. Blah 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 blah. So, like a lot of things underneath the hood that we don't know about. Yeah, we can business think. is complex. We but, like technically oh, we're we are in something that I mean we're not officially consolidated into a business. We'll have to figure that out someday but like just just the two of us running this as a theoretical commercial enterprise we have lots of weird stuff that goes on and like sudden costs and operating costs and shit like that like i need to especially as we go to we move closer to the summer and storm season i need to i need to buy a, an, an ups and figure how much juice i need to run this for when i'm recording and stuff because i need to be able to save my work really quick in case something happens we've never had a power outage kill an episode before but I'd prefer to be prepared in case that happens. By the See, way, if you hear me cussing, for instance, I am playing this month, one of this month's um, PlayStation Plus free games, Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare Remaster, Grenade! Yeah, okay, so you're actively okay. playing that. It's good. We'll come back to that later. That's one of my big yeah. topics, I think, because... Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a 12-year-old game at this point, so that's really... it's really. I think they released it for the, the remaster for the 10 years. So oh, shit, uh, dog! Goddamn dogs. Yeah. I hate the fucking dogs. All right, dog. And nobody ever but, shoots yeah, dogs. No, uh, God damn it, guys. They don't shoot 
anybody. There's literally a guy like three feet in front of me. The guys are shooting the guys 20 feet ahead of me. I'm like, hey. yeah, no, they uh, NPCs only shoot people who shoot them. If they do, if they if they actually shoot back, they're kind of accurate. But like I said, they if people are shooting at you as 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 soap or whatever, you know, Captain Price will stand five feet from you and just let you take it. But God forbid yeah, but, a Russian um, comes around the corner with a shotgun and plugs Price, then that guy's dead. Uh, but so just to to quickly wrap up, I meant I mentioned that this was for um. Genesis's uh, Android book, Shadow of the Beanstalk. So I haven't really read it over, but I've got the PDF, uh, and I I'm kind of I'm kind of excited. You know, it's cool to to see cyberpunk stuff in this setting. I love cyberpunk stuff. I was just That's watching cyberpunk. some old cyber like I watched the Cyberpunk 2077 trailer again recently just for fun. So I'm like, yeah, fuck yeah. Do we have a release date on that? No, they're probably gonna announce at E3 because I think Cyberpunk are literally the only people going to E3. What did Microsoft say they're not, they're pulling out too? No, I think, but, but EA is not doing a press conference. They're doing like a a stream event. They're not having an actual. They'll have f- a floor presence, but they're not doing like a a press as usual. Like a, they're doing like a stream thing. Oh, they're going like Nintendo does. Yeah, I think so. Um, and we know that Sony's not doing anything like a like a normal press conference either. So, it's, I, wonder if, I wonder if they're going to decide that E three is oh god, it's not worth it. Maybe because well, I oh, think for Sony thing. especially, like, because so- so- Sony took a lot of of unnecessary flack for how much effort they put in their presentation last year with like because they had the the church scene and then they moved people to the array and they had the guy playing the flute, which people were were rudely ready to be offended about. Because in case I think we mentioned this on maybe on this show, but on maybe not on this show, but like that guy's an actual like world accredited yeah, one of, like masters flute master that and. I'm pretty sure accurate. the traditional costume is a big part of the play in the flute and stuff. Like that's that is a big deal. You have to be wearing the right clothes in some of these events. Yeah, like they they don't let you just bang on taiko drums in your, uh, in you know your whatever your business casual. Um, but yeah, okay, so I th- I think that Sonny was just like, okay, fine, you want to you want a fucking perfectly produced show? Okay, we're not doing live prints conferences anymore. We'll do the Nintendo thing now. We'll, um, because I um. I just so happened to to watch some old the videos of the Nintendo Direct lying around because it was part of a, a stream archive I was watching, and um, those are those are pretty tightly produced. Oh yeah, no, like that. The, you know, they like, they was... have the mid reel where they just have an announcer briefly mention games, and then they have an actual Nintendo guy show up and be like in Japanese, but hey, hi, here's a new game. We're really excited to show you, uh, but we got more coming, so stick around. I'm gonna do the switch thing and snap my fingers and make the switch sound. <laughs> this year, I think I gotta get a switch. Anyway, um, solid eight, you'll have one. So yeah, we'll uh, we will. I'll maybe I'll take a deeper look at the Android book for Genesis, and maybe I'll do like a one shot or something sometime. Uh, other than that, recently that Fantasy Flight good. announced that uh, apparently they're not making one Clone Wars source book, but they're making two. Makes sense. Uh, so Wars first is big. Rise of the Separatists, which is supposed to be the early. Uh, Clone Wars, which has a support for like playing different clone uh, roles, playing a, 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 a you know a Jedi Padawan and stuff in the height, uh, and then f- uh, what is it? F- I think it's Fall of the Fall of the Republic is like late Clone Wars. It'll have like advice for running a game past Order sixty six. It'll let you play some of the later factions like the Mandalorian Death Watch, the Death of Mary Night Sisters, and stuff. So that'll be really interesting to see some of these neutral parties. Uh, but they only just announced that. So that's cool. We like Star Wars There's books. A- Their Star Wars RPG is good. Man, I didn't know about that. Uh, yeah, like, like before we actually got really big to this channel, we had like huge Star Wars games. One day we'll probably go back to it. Yeah, one day. But this war is good right now. Yeah, it's real good. We'll talk more about that later, maybe, because that's that's actually one thing I wanted to ask you about. Because you you and Martha a little bit had ve- had very um good but interesting kind of reactions and, and feelings on the last game which uh, isn't up yet i'm i'm a uh, we've had a busy week posting so i'm behind a little there the videos are made and the audio is ready i just need to find a slot to post them in but it will it'll probably still be a couple days because i have to tomorrow i'm pretty sure i have to shoot a, a wanted okita to have it made in time because uh fgo still keeps on moving but anyway um so i want to talk to you a little bit about that later but first especially because you're distracted right now by playing it uh, let's talk a little bit about Modern Warfare and about shooters, because both of us have been playing it. 
And we had some thoughts and feelings in Discord that I figure we no, can read grenade, on the show. No, go away. Fuck. Goddamn grenade. grenades. Grenades are one grenades. of those things. So, as you can tell from Lucky yelling at it, um, I feel like this story wise, the game is still great. Like it's got a it's it's got a great writing. Um, I actually own Modern Warfare two and three on PS three. I'm thinking about pulling those out of the back storage and playing the story campaign again just to get more of it because Knife bitches! I, I missed. It's just because it's 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 really well written. There are, there are a lot of iconic scenes, uh, you know, in there. Uh, Lucky, what where, where are you at Off right now? Single jet missile, eighty thousand points. I don't. Uh, what what mission are you on right now, Lucky? Safe house. Mm. Yeah, oh, I'm done right, already. So uh, I I'll avoid spoiling anything. But um, there's one very iconic sequence I think in the game. Um. And the game's been out twelve years, so we can talk about it even you know, even if you're not cut up. Just pause the episode and play it if you can. Yeah. Uh but the th- So I I'd think probably not go running to the building with the close air before firing on it. That'd be bad. Yeah, that might be bad. Um so it's interesting that I think the the game was originally made in, in two thousand seven. So Call of Duty four Modern Warfare uh combines I think two of our at the time classic American fears, which was um, uh, Cold War's back, the Ruskies, and also the with the nuclear threat, especially, uh, and oh, also, yeah. uh, the generic Middle East extremism terrorists. Also, the ever present, the ever the er, constant fear of weapon mass destruction. Yeah. So, like, um, there's a a very famous sequence that I I knew was coming, but I didn't know what it would be like. So the the nuke sequence where you're oh, you're minding yeah. your own business. Uh, command has been yelling at you for like ten minutes that we have a possible nuclear device in the city. You need to get out and um, you you poor sons of bitches, you and your marine first recon team, uh, the same type of units who were the first to roll into Iraq. Uh, y- y- you guys in your transport helicopter, you see your Cobra go down. That's been giving you close air support this whole time, and yeah, she's a girl. And you, you, your lieutenant tells the helicopter pilot, park it, no man gets left behind, and you fucking climb out, you have a timeler, you have this really dramatic mission to pull the pilot out, and then the, while you're flying away before you can pull the doors up, the nuke goes off, and then there's a sequence where you just crawl on the ground and die. Everybody in your unit just dies to just, one to pinpoint the 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 implications of the nuclear weapon but also just to i think to just rub it in that like dude war sucks you did something heroic you did something good and right and you still die hard here's something that i really do appreciate about modern warfare because i haven't played a lot of call of duty games i really Mm -hmm. but like the idea that for as be- like you're you're a fucking u.s marine you know you're fucking hardcore but at the end you're still fucking human yeah. Like, you, like, shit goes round. You're not gonna walk, miraculously walk out of the fucking fire. No. You, that nuke goes down. You're done. Mm-hmm. It's like, all that shit you just accomplished amounted to almost nothing. And I appreciate that because that is a humanizing experience, like, yeah. as one controlling this dude. Yeah. There, there is some escalation, I think, in some of the later sequels. But yeah, um, at least in, in the modern warfare series, the, the trilogy ish. Um, they've they have never been afraid to a pull out some stunners and b to to kill a character you're playing and make you feel like uh you know that that something sucky just happened like um like some of your uh, I think some of your more extra badass missions are when you're playing as soap when you're playing SAS you know special air service one of the first special forces units in the world uh they're the guys whose motto is who dares wins so like they're pretty hardcore. You do some hardcore stuff as those guys. Oh yeah, like your first mission is you go on the tanker and you have to run out of it while it's tanking. Uh huh. That's pretty. That's a gun. Um, but so the story and writing is great, and uh, I, like I said, I think I'm gonna if I have time real quick to I'm gonna pull those other games out of out of backlog and play them through to to get a feel for them. Uh, the campaign's not super long, I so I feel like that's pretty good. But boy, howdy, late two late two thousands era FPS design, especially heavy on the the Call of Duty plots. Who, who, um. So basically, every mission is 
there's an el- there's a there's a portal to the elemental plane of Russians or uh, <laughs> jihadists, <laughs> and it's just open over there somewhere, and you have to fight until until the portal closes and they run out of Russians. Like, uh, there's a lot of fucking Russians. God damn. And, uh, and uh, I mean, so policemen, so. Like I like I said this playing one of one of the Marine Corps missions when you're rolling into the Middle East. I like how they don't call out which country it is. They'll call it Azerbaijan as having like a the safe house that you're at. Um but they they won't say what Middle Eastern co- country we're toppling today. Um but as you're as you're rolling through the streets like you you can get attacked from all sides really easy and I'm like so on the one hand I want to complain that this sucks and isn't fair. But at the same time th- I know this is how our actual Marines were going into some of these countries because, oh, boy, yeah, howdy, no. urban fighting sucks, and we were not good at it when we started. Nope. Uh, that's why you see a lot of updates to, like, tanks, Humvees, lots of our vehicles have, um, like, the um, the MRAP kit, Mine Resistant Ambush Protection, which is literally just, yeah, they just throw IEDs at you and try to jump out, you know. When you're driving next to, like, a couple-story apartment building, if a... If a if a, a jihadi is hiding on the balcony with an RPG and just literally pops up over your head, boy howdy, that sucks. That real su- that really sucks for you, and there's not a lot you can do about it. Where's the dog coming? Where the fuck is the dog? Yeah, the goddamn dog. The dogs are another like I feel like they're a Call of Duty classic, but they're also annoying as fuck because they're small targets, they're fast moving, and they don't do the thing where they jump on you right away. They can like carry you a little bit, but then they jump on you and pin you to the ground. You can still be shot. I don't think you can die from gunfire, but you can still be shot. And then you have a QTE, or it rips your throat out. Also, I'm not sure you can snap a dog's neck neck like that. Crack. I don't know. I haven't tried, but I mean, I mean, in game, not, not actual life. No. Yeah. Let's uh, not kill animals. But yeah, so time. like the 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 game is just it it like I said, it feels very much they did for the remaster. They didn't change the game design at all. It's very much the just. Yeah, there's just big blobs of of enemies. They take a couple shots. We get we give you more ammunition than God. Go at it. By the way, what what difficulty did you play on Omega? Uh regular. Okay, this is why I'm taking so fucking long because I decided to play on fucking R. Good job, me. Well, yeah, I did. I I did the um the starting Shit. course until it was like, oh, you know, I I think I got as fast as I could get. I think I got it down to like 23 seconds. It's like you can play on hardened, and I'm like, no, I've played Call of Duty, no. Not for, like, a casual rock game. I have made... You see, I got it down to, like, what was it, like, 31 seconds? And I was like, you can hurt. I'm like, sure, why not? I can play hard games. Um, Excuse me, here I am, like, several... I don't know, I put in, like... I don't know, I put in more than probably the recommended amount of time. And, mm-hmm. you know, like, get him a fucking free out of it. And then actually... Yeah. Pretty, pretty good. So, yeah, so... And, and basically, the thing is, en- enemies... Enemies have you radar. Um, you can be stealthy in some portions, but that's usually semi-scripted, right? Like, the game yeah. accepts that you can be stealthy in this portion. Usually it's just, like, you you know, they know exactly where you are, and they're, like, they start shooting at you. Um, they can even shoot at you through walls, which is a cool game mechanic, but at the same time, it's a little bullshit when, they, when you break a plane of line of sight, and they're still, like, trying to clip you. Yeah. Um, almost it's every supposed- enemy has has an automatic weapon. Um, unless they have shotguns, which sucks even worse. Um, they can also melee you, and sometimes they get that melee in before your knife gets in, which is annoying. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are several parts in a later mission that I won't spoil the details of, but you're you're in a confined interior space, and you're on a time limit through portions of it. There are times when I was just like, okay, fuck it, I'm gonna dump rounds down range, and if I, because I'm playing at a normal ass difficulty, I can just occasionally if there's just one guy i could just run up to him and knife him rather than waste the the shots trying to like stop and shoot him in the chest i'm angry right now okay so i'm on harden um i was able to actually sneak around a house and see the guy who had on a machine gun i put four rounds into him he turned around and shot me before he went down I'm like ah, yeah that's it. also that's the difficulty adjustment is just enemies soak up more bullets and you soak up less uh now i you know it's a it's a classic Call of Duty, so it's just like if you get hit, all you need to do is hide behind a corner and wipe the strawberry jam off your face. You know, it's um, it's got the two got weapon it. system, but it's not like Halo, where like you're, at least the original Halo, where you had a depleting amount of post shields HP. Yeah. Uh, you do only get two guns. Uh, which is sometimes a pain in the butt, um, especially since the game leans into like, other than I think they have a limited number of gun models, they fix that in two. Um, but they have a limited number of gun models, so you're fighting Russian ultra-nationalists wheeling, like, 
P90s and G36Cs, which are both European weapons, mostly used by NATO. So, like, I don't know, did did they, like, topple over a, a, a NATO country for some guns or something? Like, especially considering that I know the game has both the AK-47 and the AK-74SU, the, like, the carbine version. So it's it's a little weird sometimes. There are also no Russian pistols. Uh, that's something that uh, I think off, two adds. So uh, whenever an enemy doesn't quite die and he pulls out his sidearm and tries to shoot you, he's using a, an American ass M9 Beretta for some reason. Well, but, they use a fucking um, um, Russian um, sniper rifle, the Dragunov. Yeah, there is a Russian that's... sniper rifle which shows up a lot. There are a lot of sniper rifles. Actually, it's weird. You only get to use a couple in like campaign, but they're there. Um, the Dragunov's pretty good. I think it's got a, a low recoil. I like the Dragunov. Yeah, it's pretty solid. Yeah, uh, usually see you uh, as as a soldierman get a pistol, which I'm not I sure how I don't know how accurate that is. If you're like if you're a, if you're a regular ass marine rifleman, do you usually get a sidearm? Do we yeah. do that for everybody these days? Try to, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that makes sense. So usually you get your you get an assault rifle primary. Mm-hmm. Um, the I think the game is never uh bad enough to you to hand you an SMG. I tell you one thing, they don't give you much fucking ammo. Jesus. Um, and then they usually give you a pistol as your backup weapon, which is okay because the game is like switching to your pistol is always faster than reloading. I'm I'm gas right now. I'm a little <laughs> bit like a 40k orc. I'm very I'm very British right now. Thanks, Gaz. Um. So uh, yeah, it's. It's it is faster if you run out of uh, out of a clip to just tap the button and, and switch and shoot, but goddamn, it's a pistol, you know, in a video game. It's it's not and it's not like Halo sniper pistols. It's like okay, uh, if you're using like the USP or the M1911, you know, those are both forty five caliber handguns, so they have decent stopping power in game. Like you can kill a guy in a few shots, especially if you get the head. Um, sometimes your pistol is suppressed, which tends not to alert NPCs unless they're right there. So. That's a that's a good way to shoot some guys, uh, if you're in a pinch. But usually you want to immediately throw that pistol on the ground and, and, and grab an actual gun. Um, Lash out. Lucky, I know you're fond of shotguns. Yeah. Or snipers as a secondary. Uh, those are great. Uh, there's only like two or three shotguns in the game, I think, and one of them is the semi-auto one. So if you can get that one, that one's great. Uh, the mag size is slower, but your oh, your your rate I'm of fire sorry. is. Every trigger pull is a shotgun shell, which, uh, hey, when you're doing those those tight interior maps we're talking about, that's a godsend. Just, oh, there's a guy over there. Blam, blam. Oh, I didn't need two shots, but whatever. Blam. Uh, yeah, no. I'm lucky I can find because I would shoot all my eyes because um, that's what I just fucking did. Like, I came around, I had my shotgun out, came around the corner. I see movement, bang. My friend. I'm like, I'm glad you're invincible. Yeah, there you can occasionally friendly fire, but that's it's very hard. I think it's easy. Yeah. I feel like it was easier in the sequel because I had that problem a lot more. But I've, I think I've only once occasionally done that, and that's in specific missions because usually you can't even point your gun at your allies. Like you can, you can point it at them, but the game's like you can't pull the trigger, you can't aim down sights. This is why I can't do actual war because I would um, I would like uh actually just kill way too many of my own. And that's oh, that's how the we... fuck did you get in here? I cleared this fucking house. Why were you on the second story? Yeah, they're annoying like that. Yeah, clear of your room. Um, I'm also uh, sniper rifles are also a, a good thing if just distance because enemies don't really have uh, like we said they don't really have line of sight or a visual range problems. If you can see an asshole moving around on the map, he can see you and he can try and shoot at you. The game, I think, I think the game accounts for recoil. So like, there's. Most enemies have the normal bullet spread that you would. So, like, if they're running and hip firing, they're kind of shitty. But if they they get a chance to stop and aim their gun at you, they can be fairly accurate with short bursts. Uh, because uh, enemies almost never just uh, press down the trigger and spray. Uh, sometimes they do. So, but sometimes they do. But usually that's because they have a machine gun. Like two in two instances of transfer, I've seen one when someone's a high behind the door, shoot through the fucking door. And occasionally I'll see do it like they'll be behind cover and they'll do blind fire. Yeah, they have a special animation. Yeah, which you can't do, by the way. You can't do that. Nope. Welcome uh, to early fucking two thousand shooters where things very. Yeah, you have your your environmental interaction is you can jump, and sometimes <laughs> you can jump over cover. Sometimes, if we feel like it. Uh, a body. No. Yes, that is a body. Shoot. The I mean, we're body. we're probably spoiled because we both said that we really like Titanfall two, and that's like. 
Titanfall was the game that I think changed mobility in a lot of first person shooters because it was like, holy shit. Uh, oh, you fuck. Can... Oh, bad. Oh, bad. Oh, bad. I just called dying. a close airstrike on um, my on house. Me? Whoops. Yes, on on <laughs> trying to tag it from a house nearby, but I moved a little too far down and pushed a button. Uh, so I'm like, I think well, close there. Yeah, danger close. I'm gonna go hide in the. I'm gonna go hide in the stairs for a minute. It's probably good. Yeah, that's loud. Yeah, I don't even know. What do you? They only have so many models. Do you have? Is it a hind or a cobra they have on you? Don't know. It's probably it's probably a hind because it's, 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 it's a cobra. It's a cobra. It's a cobra. Even though you're, I think it's Russians helping you. It's weird. Whatever they uh, had, they only had like three models. Yeah, maybe it is a hind. It looks a little, looks a little too big for a hind, but I could be wrong. H- hinds are big fat helicopters. Yeah, they are. Uh, trust me, you'll see a lot yeah, of them, buddy. Uh, they, you also see, I don't remember what they are, but there's a lot of the transport chopper where they they'll fucking f- the elemental plane of Russians will open and they'll fast rope some more Russians right on top of you, and it's really annoying because the the like the way uh, hit hit boxes work, you can't. You can't always like try and blow up the helicopter and make them crash or something. Oh no! I was like, actually, I preferred that. Like when I was all throughout the Middle East, I when I was all, I kept an RPG because surprise helicopters don't get yeah. That's a good, that's a, that's a good use of the RPG. That you can do that for, which is way better yeah. than what most of the the op four used the the RPG for, which is trying to shoot you. Which uh yeah, I, I, which is hilarious because even if you get hit by the RPG, you don't. It's like not an automatic kill. No, like, it's I a lot of R- damage, but it's not <laughs> quite enough to kill you. <laughs> which is hilarious. Well, it depends, because an RPG is actually, it's a its a shaped explosive. It, it'll, it explodes and basically shoots a copper jet, so it's really good at armor. But, like, I could see how if it hit near you, or if it, like, clipped you a little bit, you'd, like, not be instantly paced. Because you're, they're, they're doing something very dumb, trying to kill a single infantryman, no matter how fabulous you are, with an RPG. Uh, but, whatever, they do it. Uh, also, Ed, I don't know if enemies run out of grenades. Um, I'm just not seeing them run out. Because, boy, howdy, they throw a lot of fire. I love that you can throw grenades back, but they throw a lot of fucking grenades. Um, so close here. So let me, I'm going to call out this fucking helicopter. Let's see if I can get a better look at it. Uh, and I do love that on that mission you're on, even though it says one, like, your your close air support regenerates, which is great. Oh, no, that's a little hind. Yeah, no, that's a hind. Okay. Cool. That. I, I think I like earlier. machine guns and rockets and stuff. And they'll, they'll, yeah. They will blow up those houses you call it on, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um... But well, yeah, like I said, I the, the game close. design is just, it's its so dated at this point, because it's just, you are shoot man, you you don't have an HP number, you just have a vague feeling of how many bullets you can hit, and it's like, you sponge bullets, enemy sponge bullets, you shoot more bullets than you take, you win, good job. So it's its funny to see how games have, have, have evolved, and like, it can be a very frustrating experience sometimes, where you're just like, why, why won't these guys die? <laughs> like, because I, I am used to some newer games where, like, where you maybe have a little more fine controls, or you can get a little bit better response times, or just maybe they've gas. Yes, the why are you shooting better. by the fire? I'm literally. We're all outside shooting. Gas is inside. There's a roaring fire. He gets his bum toasting. I'm like, you motherfucker. Hey, C4. Also, okay. this is another thing. We're um, they fix this a little bit in the sequels, I think, because I don't remember this problem. But in Modern Warfare One, uh presumably because that's a typical Call of Duty thing is to is to put lots of these NPCs around you so the world feels lived in or whatever. But yeah. um, in Modern Warfare, which is Call of Duty 4, uh, they give you, a, like, exa- not exaggerating, they give you, like, between, like, half a dozen and a dozen guys who just wander around you um, and do nothing. They're completely worthless. Oh, uh, yeah. And the SS team is just chilling in this house while I'm trying to clear guy. The only guy who's actually out fucking helping me is the Russian who joins you at the beginning. Apparently he yeah. got he's very invested in this. Yeah, they they have like some like I said I don't think they updated their AI at all. So they have weird like pathing like if you start towards an objective they will generally move with you. If you kind of me- meander off they kind of stand somewhere stuck until you start going in the direction because god forbid they move ahead of you and actually start doing some work. But um yeah, like, like I'm like at the house like, trying to shoot at the other house so I can like clear enough of the space I can progress because i'm a veteran i can't charging for shit i just can't no. cover to cover kill 20 guys move to next cover yeah so i have to stay in one spot for a while those guys my guy just behind me yeah um, that's that's definitely a classic call of duty thing which is like you pick a for kit up you pick a location or the game picks a location for you and you fort up and you have to wait until guys stop coming 
And sometimes the game is like, it wants you to push up so the guys don't stop coming until you move a little bit and trigger something. But most of the time it's just like, okay, we just sit here and we once we've cleared out this cluster of guys, we can move on to the next step of the objective. And then somehow at the next step of the objective, there's just even more guys. <laughs> I'm a third grenade. Like, seriously. See, I'm, I'm the ultra-nationalists. <laughs> Where are you getting all these guys? I know Russia's big, but holy shit. There's a lot of guys in this village. Oh, on point. The reason why I'm playing is I want to practice if I can play and talk at the same time. So in the future, consolidated, and we do what's up, we can have a video component. Yeah, besides just us talking and waggling our yeah. hands. Which I don't think has happened. If if we'd had a webcam feed, you'd have seen me accidentally bump the bottom of my mic stand, and you would have seen me turn my mic off and blow my nose really quick just now. <laughs> because breathing. Anyway, yeah, so it's, like I said, it's just funny to see how shooters have evolved, and like, like if you play something, like I said, like Titanfall, or Titanfall 2, which, because that's where the single player started, like, you've got a lot of mobility in these games. Um, Actually, if I like, when did Titan, when did Titanfall come out? Because I remember Titanfall God was big with the fucking mobility and shit. And the, I also remember I think it was Black Ops Three, I want to say, or was it Advanced Warfare? Like, because at, like at, at some point there was definitely a paradigm dip in your shooters. From... I I think it was Titanfall, uh, which came out in 2014. So because Titanfall kind of yes. redefined what you could do, and uh, you know. What you call it? Yeah, because um, like, because that's when the double jump was added. That's when a lot of like, that's when clamber became a, a, an industry standard, which is great. Good old clamber. Like before that, it was like you know run around, like you know, run around three sixty scope, jumping, uh-huh. and the camping. the way you could tell between whether you were in a Call of Duty or a Battlefield game was I, I joked about this was if you were playing Battlefield, the the mission would have had you get in the tank. Yeah. As opposed to you just walk around it. But my main response to that, but you get to be the gun around the AC-130, and that was amazing. Yeah, the AC-130 missions are always great. Um, Fuck. it's in, it's interesting because that's like, uh, that's a that's a that's a kill streak. So that's obviously got some support. Uh, so yeah, I mean you can switch the thermal axe. Um, there's two types. There's uh. Which I think is actually pretty cool because, uh, fun fact, th- th- quote unquote thermal cameras are like, and it's kind of an illusion, right? Like, yeah, they don't actually necessarily work that way. So you can switch between uh, hot as hot as dark or hot as light. Uh, I found the dark easier yep. to see, to pick people out, to like pick out dark nope, dark points on a, on a background. Uh, and if you have a hard time yeah, seeing stuff, just see- zoom in real tight with the twenty five mil. Yeah, first time I did it, like I almost immediately bombed my own guys because I didn't realize they were strobing. Yeah, Captain I had Price that problem. Sh- I think I, I think I got my guys like twice. Once I accidentally was just like, "You forgot the strobe," and I'm like, ah, don't fire on the guys who strobe. Whoops, shit! I accidentally put you know a, a forty or a, uh, or a one fifty too, too close. Whoops! Uh, and then another time they were moving no, and they got fucking... the enemies got too close to them, and I just accidentally because you know you're orbiting. I accidentally strafed my own guys. There was also one time I think with a with a forty millimeter bow force, I clipped a little too close to the church and accidentally. Scraped one of the roof a little. Oh yeah, you're not supposed to hit that. No, for some reason I don't understand why. I, I Maybe don't Call know, of I Duty know. doesn't want you to bomb churches. Right, we're going inside. It's who's this Russian photo guy? That said, when you get to the junkyard, you can just mostly cut loose at the end and just like those buildings on the flanks, you can blow them up. So yeah, I love the AC-130. There's another one in two, I think. I don't know if there's another AC-130 in three, but probably because I feel like those missions are popular because God damn, the, the AC-130 is an amazing platform. Oh yeah, it is. Twenty five millimeter down. rotary cannons, the forty millimeter bow fours, uh the later versions have the you know, the hundred and fifty millimeter smooth bore cannon, which is just hi, yeah. fuck you. That's why they call them spooky. Uh, actually I think uh the version we're flying is the Spectre. But yeah, yeah they're they're great. Um and All right, how like this is something we kinda of touched on earlier. Like the the game makes you feel like uh uh, you know, War kind of sucks sometimes, but also there's there's plenty of ooh rah devil dog going on. Yep. Uh, the AC-130 mission it's is totally like, that. As you're listening to the fire control officer, you be like, "Oh, look at that guy fly! Oh, you really got him. <laughs> That's a good hit. He's he's down. Or uh, that guy's not dead. Give him another pass. Like just mm-hmm. the the cold surgical. Hey, by the way, you're a kill. You're you're in a in a war machine right now, blowing up lots of guys. However, 
The ultra nationalists are huge assholes, so it's fine. Don't accidentally but bl- like, and they're they're real on you. They're like, don't accidentally blow up civilians. Don't blow up your own team. Don't do it. Don't blow up that church. Um, what was I gonna say? But yeah. Um, like another good thing, interesting thing about like the game. Like we're talking about, you know, not afraid to kill ca- characters. Like the entire interesting is once you get done with the fucking training and the ship mission, is a fucking. Where you're just a helpless prisoner right. being drug. What's called you're... controllable helplessness. Uh, you're you're the Middle Eastern president who gets assassinated on TV, but you don't realize that until the very end, where they're just you have like a bag tossed over your head. You get thrown in the back of the car. It's it's the credit sequence. The credits roll. You get taken to a fort. You get dragged up, put on a post, and the guy plugs you with a Desert Eagle. Yeah, it's good. Be- like this because multiple perspective games are like really hit or miss for me. Mm-hmm. Like. Um, like that's one of the things I had issues with, like, um, Battlefield, because I was playing, uh, I had, like, what was it, Battlefield 3 or something? I don't know. And they keep switching characters, and I'm like, can I just, like, consolidate me? Yeah, I, I, Battlefield 3, is, if, I'm, if it was Battlefield 3, because I've played that one too, that one's a little weird, because I mentioned that, like, you'd get in the tank. There's a tank mission in Battlefield 3. There's also a, a plane gunner or plane SIO mission. Yeah. Like, so... You will occasionally join the war effort on other fronts in different roles to show yeah. off like vehicle or vehicle controls and stuff because it's battlefield. But those player, those characters never show up again. It's just for one yeah. mission because we have to show off tanks. Yeah. Which I mean, goddamn, I love I love the vehicles aspect of battlefield games, but also, yeah, no, it's it's a little distracting when you're trying to build a narrative. So like, I like I like this tighter focus on like it literally. Two guys, and then you like zoomed out to play the uh, AC one thirty, where you're still on point because you're still right. in the same. Yeah, fucking... you're still you're still with the SAS team. You're just providing the air support. Yeah, there is literally a mountain of corpses just piling outside the fucking window because they keep you out know, the same way. Yep, there's another one. Um, and also, I wish you guys could see this. Like, really technically, good. also the plot is. I mean, the plot in Battlefield Three is interrelated, but the 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 way the plot in Modern Warfare works out, it's like you're your two allied forces, because you're both NATO countries, we're working together. Brits, Brits and U.S., yay. Um, and you eventually, f- uh, later, you'll form a joint mission, which I think you've oh, seen nice. the intro for. It's just I don't know if any, if any U.S. forces have joined you in the field yet, but you've seen the beginning of it already. Yeah. Uh, because that thing happened, and now the U.S. is very, very mad. We're we're a little nettled, as I as I expect we would be. But um, yeah. But yeah. So the I got a screenshot of this. Nice. Uh, you'll have to show it to me. But um, I am, I am. the uh, the the narratives are connected, but they're separate enough that you don't feel like you're you're being taken out of the story. It's like coming at it among like two two enemies. Oh, there it is. Like you're you're coming at it from two angles, and then the plot points kind of merge together after a point, which is good. Yeah. Um. And, uh... Oh, they're vanishing! No! Two and three both do a similar thing, where, like, you'll you'll work with different forces until your plots diverge or converge as they needed to kind of tell the story from multiple angles. Mm. And, uh, Modern Warfare 2 is the source of the infamous Ramirez do everything! Um, because it's, uh, Keith David uh, plays your... You play an army ranger as one of the ca- as one of the the playable characters, and uh, your... I don't know if he's a senior NC or an officer off the top of my head, but your commanding officer is played by Keith David, and you're playing Ramirez, and he just yells at you to do everything. <laughs> I'm just gonna share this as is. I'll delete it off my... I'll delete it off my Twitter later, because it's a lot of dead bodies. Oh, I got plenty of ammo now, thank God. Yay, ammo. Yeah, that's I'm the one thing I... that's good about the default guns, is they give you, like, 300 rounds. They give you a lot of ammo, but you'll use a lot of ammo. Uh, I was gonna mention this earlier. I like LMGs just because they have huge mag size, so you can you can fire some bursts or you can just rambo some guys if you need to. Man, like right now, I'm glad like whatever gun these guys are using is compatible with the M4 mod because I love this gun. Yeah, the M4 is great. I love that they give you the stop mod with like suppressor, red dot, sometimes hollow. Um, uh, no, it's the uh, Pequod. It's only um you have to you have to night vision for it. Ah, okay. They say they have the laser. But yeah. they give you either the reflex or the hollow sight. Yeah, I got the uh, reflex right now. Wait, and no, um, also they give you the M203. Thank God. 
This thing's the, amazing. The two of the two or three physics in like multiplayer are a little wonky, but that might just be because of lag. Because I've noticed some lag when I've I've played a little bit of multiplayer since I beat it. But fact, I uh, actually in, in campaign, it's great. Um, you can noob tube people, which is where you just hit them with the shell and it doesn't detonate, but it usually kills them. Fine. Oh but, no, I've actually seen someone with an actual grenade. Yeah. They it was it was kind of funny. But um, actually, I uh, learned this. Um, the M203 is no longer um, um, active. It's been replaced by I think it was the M320. Oh, do we have a new is, system? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll show it to you later. I still love like I don't know. The M203 is kind of the quintessential under barrel mount for me. Yes. You know, slide it forward, slap it's... that, slap that f- single forty millimeter grenade in. Chuck it out. Mm. Oh, that, that did remind me that there is a brief bit in that mission where you play the door gunner on the. On the um, the oh, helicopter yeah. with the uh, Mark Forty, you get a, a fully auto gr- grenade launcher. I feel yeah, like you don't so accomplish much with it because the the helicopter moves a lot. Oh no, there's you can do plenty with it. Like you can take a tank, rooftop, uh, yeah. rooftop um, rocket launchers. It's just the thing. The thing is, about, like about this game is when guys are far away, they're really fucking hard to see. Yeah, they're not visually distinct. That's um. Oh no, no, they are not. Yeah, um, that's a, th- well, I mean, mo- most of them are, that's the thing that I think Modern Warfare had at this point was realism, right? Like, yeah, um, most of the guys are realistically clothed. All your allies are in camo or they're in their night, pu- they're, you know, their black footy pajamas. Um, you run a lot of, you run a lot of spec f- force missions at night, which means you have to turn on your night visions, which completely kills the color on everything. Yep. But, uh, you can see at least. And oh, hey, just... I got close air support. Yeah. Um, so they're not, I don't, I don't know if the game really gets better about that. That's, that's something that, like, um, that's, that's one of the advantages, I think, of sci-fi shooters is you can make enemy silhouettes more distinct, or you can get away with, like, here's your HUD. Enemies will literally be automatically highlighted. So. Yeah, like, also, I also gotta think about it. It's, like, it's middle of the night, it's fucking cast, like, there's this slight fog everywhere. Yeah, kind of hard to fucking see people. Yeah, this is, this is a normal fog of war situation. You can't see shit. Yeah. Your N- your NVGs kill your color vision, and fuck with your depth perception a little, and you're just like fighting in close quarters, and trying not to get shot by your own helicopters. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I uh, said, the, the feel is very good. It's just sometimes you're like, I I wish you had put a little bit more into quote unquote game design of it, just because. Well, you see, that's the 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 game parts don't necessarily always feel very fun. Well, uh, that's why this is called a remaster, not a remake. Yeah, no, that's true. All they, they and were, and at the time, up. it was definitely on point. It's just like I said, you can yeah you can feel like they were making well maybe maybe they chose because they had technical limitations at the time, but you can feel like they're making deliberate choices to be like, no, of course the enemy models are going to be in you know woodland or olive drab. That's just what they'd be wearing. No, of course that means you can't hardly see shit at night. But hey, that's why you have um things, and that's um that's something that two slightly improves because um. One of the possible scopes you can get is a thermal scope, which actually shows up a couple times in campaign. So that makes it a hell of a lot easier to see people because they just, you know, glow bright, glow bright white. Um, uh, like playing this game. Go ahead. I'll keep going. Well, I was just going to say two also has another. It has another AC-130 mission for sure because I remember that because that was super fun. Um, but it also has a uh, a another chopper gunner mission, but that's like you're actually. Um, you're doing the a Cobra or Viper support because that's one of the kill streaks in multiplayer. Is you can actually play a, a, a I think it's a Cobra gunner or maybe a Viper gunner, and it's like you get the the minigun on thermal, and that's super fun. And I have to run across a fucking farm field, and there's still guys shooting, but they're too far. Yeah, yeah fields fields. Well, hey, you you know this already from from other stuff, but fields suck. Oh, open open fields of fire are bad. They're bad kids. They're real I bad. Just, oh, I hit checkpoint. Booyah. I don't know. The game is literally just randomly checked. So I'm like, okay. Yeah, checkpoints in Call checkpoints in lots of FPS games, but especially the Call of Duty type are like a secret art form. It's like, am I gonna am I gonna check now? Sometimes no. Sometimes oh, no, you have God, to oh, run God. a whole ten minute no. segment over and over again until you get it perfect. Other times it's like oh, yeah, no, you're just in the middle of somewhere. Well, I'm like, okay. Okay, that guy was hiding behind a door and not shooting because I guess he was having a smoke break, sure. Yeah, NPCs, enemies are weird sometimes. They just, the mind of their own business. Okay, uh, on the roof. I put them, no. 
Um, yeah, you have did not die. Uh, you, the, you have one of the most fun missions, I think, which will be a lot less hectic uh, after this, which is super cool. But you'll see, assuming you get through this. But yeah, so like I said, it's it's been interesting to take this yeah. this ride on the way back. The writing is still solid, and just it's just like, man, game design's a little weird. Like I'm thinking the story, the game, the story is actually really fucking simple, but the way that you played through it, it's still engaging. Yeah. Like, um, like literally, like your story is like SAS. It's like, all right, there's shit going on with the Russians. We need to figure out what the fuck's going on, and we're gonna like collab with the Americans who just lived had shit nuked that well had a city nuked a bunch of their fucking dudes in their fist. Like, you know, get from point A to point B, mm-hmm. kill a bunch of dudes. But at the same time, I'm like, no, I like this. I want to see where this goes. Yeah, and there, uh, there are time, there are more timers later. There's already been time missions, but there, there will be some missions that have ticking clocks, which are like really drive the tension. They have a really good escalation pattern to these games. Uh, and if I remember rightly from looking at like the list of of missions, it's divided into a five act structure, which is probably really oh. good for this type of game. What did I act on? Maybe four. I don't know. All right, let me type this out. And it's yeah. Um. And because it's an early game, you can kind of see where, like I said, like they don't ha- they don't have the full model of variety and like weapons or whatever. Like I said, the you're you're in central Central Asia, Russia, and you're fighting guys. Like I said, armed with German made G thirty six Cs, which are a NATO weapon, and a P nineties, you know, made by the Swiss. So it's like not that I'm not that I'm super glad to see my baby the P ninety. Um, and Call of Duty is one of those games that gave me a love for the P ninety, besides the fact that it's just a box. Also, uh, much like why I like LMGs, getting a weapon with a 50-round magazine capacity really helpful for gameplay. I don't know what game taught me the mas- the mastering of the burst fire technique, where you don't hold- ever hold down the trigger. You... No, I'm, well, I mean, that's that's called actual real-life shooting. They don't... Yeah. You only fire full auto to suppress. Yeah. Uh, because you're not gonna hit anybody that way. You really don't. The... In the military. I don't know. I've been playing video games forever. Where yeah. I Con- control I bursts. Know. Control bursts, center a well, mass. Alright, well, Price is punching the fuck out of this dude. He did that. And he do that. Okay. Price is an angry man with great yeah, mutton chops. That's something that the remaster really did. I did not realize his facial hair was quite so detailed. Oh, no, it does. At, at most difficulties, it does. You just have to... It's um, Call of Duty hitboxes are weird, Um, but it's like... Up, upper upper bo- upper body or head is is where you want to fire. Yeah, no, um, four to five shots to the to the chest usually take the man down. Yeah, and that's that's on those higher level difficulties. I think on regular you can do that in about three. Sadly, you you don't you don't get access to it a lot in the campaign, but uh, in multiplayer you start with the the M sixteen A. I don't know whichever A conf- config we're on right now. So you're in the three round burst model that Marines are actually using. Um, so you can, that's, that's very accurate because that burst fires on its own, you know, it doesn't full auto, but mm-hmm. boy, howdy, there are sometimes when you like, if you miss a cluster, you're like, man, I really wish I could just keep going and walk these shots. No, you have to, you have to pull the trigger again. Oh, am I going into a pass mission now? What? Oh yeah. You're doing, you're doing the Pripyat mission. This is great. You, you ready to do some, some sneaky beaky? I'm ready to sneaky beaky. This is, other than the nuke thing, this is probably one of the me- the most iconic missions in Modern Warfare. Yeah, it's like, like, oh, it's all gillied up. It's the one where I can actually stealth the whole fucking thing, huh? Yes. I don't know if I, I, don't know if I can fucking do that on... Um, on mic? Property. Probably not. But I'll try. It's easy in some parts and hard in others. Sometimes it takes some trial and error. There's, there's a section where, like, a whole mass of guys and, like, BMPs come out rolling over the hill. I just... I just crawled up my... my NPC's butt basically and hid exactly behind him and scooched a little so I didn't get didn't get caught because boy howdy the enemies are real dumb for this if you go prone and don't move they have to like step on you which is how actual real life ghillie suits work like some some of this camouflage stuff you don't you don't see that guy unless he moves look at the back of my fucking guy like no lay down I would not be able to see him no the only reason why you can see your your n p c buddy the captain sometimes is because it gives you a, a big green name over him. It's really easy to lose track of him if you're like prone or something, but yeah, that's a really fun iconic mission uh where you can actually stealth and they give you the the kit for it. you get a silent sniper rifle you get the 
the pistol. Oh, yeah, like, I am literally, like, walking up on this dude, and he does not see me. Now, enemies are real dumb in this, except when they're smart. Welcome to Call of Duty. And I got a USP-45. Yeah, you do. A solid tactical weapon, the the USP being the, uh, well, closer to the, the actual mass production version of the Mark 23, because, goddamn, the actual Mark 23 is heavy. And then you get a really fun segment with you later with some sniping. But uh, I'll leave you to get to that. So, let's see. Um, other than just talking about it more in general, there's not a lot to specifically talk about Call of Duty 4. Uh, just that it's actually, like I said, it's actually kind of fun. Sometimes it's really frustrating, but you you know, you know, kind of get used to the, the nature of the beast, as it were. I feel like I can pause and actually do this when I'm not like, half listening to you. That's fine. Actually, that's good, because I want to kind of transition into a different topic that I wanted to talk about. Uh, which is kind of related because there's some war stuff and some sneaking stuff in it. Mm-hmm. But um, so on our last session of Mages of War, uh, you guys, the players, were like really involved and into it, and I'm glad that you 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 verbalized that a lot because I I was as GM, you know, peek behind the behind the screen. I was a little less sure about how it was going out until at the end when we were like, no, yeah, that was really that was really gripping. So I kind of wanted y- you guys to more on mic. Well, you specifically, we could probably. Or drag up Marth, but let's. There's no need to do that, and just we'll just let you go for this uh, <laughs> to kind of kind of talk about how how you felt doing that operation. Because as much as I I had the idea that you might go somewhere remote and kind of like have to do sort of an investigatory thing, like you'd have to hunt something predatory without necessarily realizing you're hunting it uh, with like spooky clues and stuff. Um, a lot of that was also unlike like figuring out it was. It was in a ruined village, and it was overgrown. That was like uh, random tables. So it, some of it was emergent, but my my actual design for that was super minimal. So I'm glad it it, it seemed to land. I, I'd like you to kind of well, like, like think about your thoughts on that, and maybe reflect the story to the audience about how you you know recount the story in your own words, even though it's on recording, obviously. All right. So basically, it started out like so. Here's like like here's this interesting thing. First off is that there has been, like, this weird issue with the earth base and ley line in the area. And it's been coming up... Oh, excuse me. And it's been coming up here, and that's, like, something weird's been happening. Like, there was the mana eruption, there was the incident at the fort, and then now we go further up, up that ley line, and it turns out that, that there's this great, like, overgrown area. And part of, like, you know, part of the major thing is she's been sending out recon teams to, like, investigate, like, investigate the lead line. It's sure enough, well, not sure enough, but it turns out one of them goes missing. And she sent her favorite, um, we're gonna go do stupid shit and somehow sort of team, which are the, um, Skywolves, which is the, um, I, the company, that's what I was trying to think of, the platoon company. This is the company I command, and we're gonna go uh, figure this shit out. But we don't need like seventy-five guys to um. So we don't need enough guys to go like combing the woods when we're like literally still at war, with surrounded on all sides. Well, three sides. The other side's the ocean, which you might you could as well be surrounded on because you you guys are playing the the equivalent in the setting of Germany, and uh, that means one of your major opponents is England, who are known for their naval power. Yeah. But still. Um, so, we can't, like, take... I can't take all my freaking guys, because that's just dumb. So, I take a small detachment, and we, like, drive up north to save on our mobility in its time. Yeah, so basically when... what you did was you said, give me, like, a squad, like, six guys mixed from my units... We'll put them as reinforcements, and the player characters will go forward to investigate the thing. Well, as I because, like, here's the thing, like, out of character, like, no matter what, these are going in, because that's how the game is played. Like, I'm, I don't want to play fucking, civil, like, military civilization where I sit back in a chair and I command my dudes to go do shit. Mm-hmm. That, that seems boring. Well, you can theoretically well, do the game seem- like that. There's mass combat rules, but that's, that's... For much larger engagements than this. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, and like Omega said at one point, we're still at the point in where it's completely okay for the most highest rank, for the highest rank to go charging um, sword first into the melee. 
Um, but like in the process of getting there, we come across we um we heard some interesting news. Like villages have been abandoned, livestock are dead. And oh, just and actually, just I, this is something I haven't actually told you guys yet. But um, the uh, the reason why I decided this is a plot point is because I rolled a random campaign event, which was Exodus. So. I'm, I'm yeah. making it a thing that people are moving out of certain areas to get out of the way of war. Yeah, but, like, we didn't know if people were moving, moving out, like, fleeing. If not, why did they, like, leave their livestock? Why did they take them with them? But, like, upon, like, we're headed towards a friendly village when um, Ulrich, Marf's character, spots a couple on the ground, and he says there's something weird about them. Of course, we call it like the the truck to stop. We all get out and investigate, and it turns out that um, I think it were goats or correct, like were goats were um poisoned, and it was a nasty poison that kind of that like wards off like that basically contaminated the meat to the point that even insects wouldn't land in it. So you know that's like black, it's like black aether. That's like that's like bad stuff. And by looking at the type of bite wound, it would only assume that it was done like a giant snake. Of course, this is the immediate part where it's like where we all go, all right, what the hell do we know has a has is a reptile, is a giant reptile, and has venom. Um, so we started thinking like maybe like dire animals, like other like species. But the one that we fell on the hardest, the one that seemed to automatically click, was the Chimera. We don't. I'm not exactly sure why we said specific Chimera, but for some odd reason, we felt Chimera. Like talking about diet. So you, oh, yeah. you rolled your academics as like, as I call it, monsterology, because that's one of the things it covers is knowing folklore and tales of magical biology, basically. Yep. Um. So you came up with a couple of answers, like, um. In the conditions you were in, like I said, there wouldn't be any Naga people, um, because they're you're too much in a in a as much as they like warmth, you're in too dry a condition. They like a little wetter, so mm-hmm. like it wouldn't be a snake person. Um, it could be like j- just uh, a snake engorged on um, Earth man or whatever, so it's like become giant, like something out of a B movie. But you also latched on because you also remembered that the the chimera, you know, is known to have the three heads, one of which is a snake. So it's like, and they're big. Um, yes, you uh, hate spoilers. You run into a chimera later. Um, and they're they are quote unquote large creatures. So this is something the size of like a bear or a horse. Like they're they're big boys. So that that was kind of what said it because your your medic was vaguely where he was like, okay, it looks. It's got like the up and down, like a fang bite. So it looks, it looks kind of like a snake bite. But I'm no expert. But that's a that's a really big freaking snake bite. Yeah. Uh, I think that's kind of where the latching under the chimera was. It was like, okay, so it's a giant snake or it's a chimera because those are the only things large enough to leave these wounds. And it is that moment is then when the tension, like, got its first fucking notch. Because, like, here's the thing about here's the thing about horror and spooked and whatnot. Um, there are t- several types of horror. One is um, where there is the um, this, like, uh, how do I explain it? One is when the monster's in your fucking face. Like, this is like um, uh, good example, uh, Dead Face, where shit just literally comes screaming at you. It's tense, it's spooky, but like. Once you like taking care of the threat, you know it like it's your like your tension down. All right. Then um, there's below that where you know that the creature is around you but hasn't made its a presence. That is, that is you know um, detach it and chaining up because you don't know when you're gonna be fucking it, like in um, uh, alien isolation. And then there's the third type when the monster doesn't quite exist yet and you're fucking scaring yourself. This is the part we were in. Yeah, the because, Alfred the Alfred Hitchcock, the scariest monster is the one you didn't see. Yeah. So basically, like, um, like, um, so we were in this state. Where it's like, oh my god, there could be a fucking chimera out there. What can it do? How big is it? Be? How scary is it? How easily can it fucking kill us? And we proceeded with that. So, 
So I'm already like, I'm already starting to wait out. Like I immediately ask, we have, have Venom and, uh, Chief, that's a uh, real expensive. You ain't got that. I'm like, damn it. No, because like but, I, I joked about this in the in the session when you actually hear it. Uh, anti anti venom as an item is practically magic because it's it's one one item fits all. So yeah, they're fucking expensive. Mm-hmm. So we get and to the you friendly did not, village. You did not think to ask this question until you were standing in a field in the middle of nowhere, Africa, with some looking at some dead goats. Because that's one of those things. It's like. Like gear, but I don't want to try and carry everything. I don't want to try and carry like literally everything for everything just in case. Well, yeah, because uh, you just spent all your you you just spent all your money basically getting yeah, some really thanks. sweet custom stuff. And like, oh, I'm telling you right now, Antivana is going on the to get list. Jesus fucking Christ! But um, so we get to the friendly village. We have some recon guys out there, and they're a little on edge. Which, you know, feeds into my tension. I'm like, are these goose spooked? I had to, like, literally lean on the commanding officer and make an intimidation roll. I shouldn't... Which I'm not good at, actually. I'm kind of surprised I made it. Oh, I totally forgot that since I have the fucking medal and I am an officer, I should have gotten a plus 40 to that, so I should have been, like, okay anyway. But, hey, this is why you got to remember your fucking bonuses. They're very important. The game is deliberately mm. skewed so that you're kind of bad at stuff. You have usually like a 50-50 shot or less. Yeah. Or a, or yeah. a one in three shot if you're not really good at that stat. Yeah. I think plus four would have put me at like 50-something. That's like pretty hard, actually. And it's but... also the kind of thing where like you could you could see spending a point of luck to be like, oh, well, I have a decent chance of passing if I try to re-roll it. But so uh, it turns out that the guys are spooked. Like, who were in this village previously left in a real hurry, leaving their valuable. And so, like, everyone's on edge, and I'm like, because we gotta go basically investigate this overgrown village where the grass is literally taller like, than some, in some areas, is taller than a person. It's like, Ugh! this, I actually link the, um, Jurassic uh, Park 2 scene with the Velociraptors in the grass. Yeah, the grass was iron. It's like, oh god, no. So now on a meta sense, I'm getting more tense because um, tall grass is a great way to hide big things. So I'm and, like, and okay, at the, and at okay. the very least, you're still in southern Africa. Like, you could run into a lion or some wild dogs or something, even before we get magical. Yeah, yeah. Um, thing. And, like, I was considering flying over it, but, like, the thing, the tall grass, um, with the tall grass, I wouldn't be able to see fucking anything. Just because the tall grass would have just overgrown everything, so I have to actually get on in there and move from point to uh, point. I, I, which is I deliberately played the battlefield conditions a little cagier than I usually do, but I, I was sure to point out to you this, I rolled on the table, this, the target had blacked out and overgrown, so it was like, so there's a shitload of natural cover and concealment, and there's no lighting here, so, and it was a night mission. Because the so we're literally on the the major the is very apologetic to you, but she's like, "Hey, overnight, I need you to go do something for me." And you're like, "Shit, be back yeah. by dawn." Fuck. Yeah, it was actually, actually I think it's like a really cool scene, personally where, like, we're literally on our way through the glass. I have my lantern out. Yeah, you put, you uh, we actually joke that you got real real Legend of Zelda because you're you're sword and board, mm -hmm. um, which you can do because you're a mage. Otherwise, you'd be dead. But. <laughs> uh, you can afford to do that and you clipped a lantern to your belt and you I feel like there were a couple points where you were about five seconds away from setting this grass on fire probably like be glad I did not actually um, one thing I did post a uh, game is I spent all my experience on fire like all of it yeah I was like I'm about to do some shit but uh, yeah, but like again, I didn't want to set a fucking um, grassland fire because mm -hmm. uh, and uh, stuff. yeah, you guys actually did a pretty interesting. You did you did a side by side. You picked Mart's character, who is his starting class was Grunt, so he was a default soldier, and he has since uh, advanced his career up to like scout and pathfinder, and now vanguard. Like so, he he's an advanced you know front running warfare kind of guy. So he he bought a machete. He bought yeah. an actual honest guy machete. So you guys are up front hacking away at the grass to like cut a path so you can see. While the corpsman and the radio man, who's your who's your XO, are in the back. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, by the way, um, I'm not completely mad because I will always like to remind you of uh, Fighting Jack Chur- Churchill, who went into war with a longbow, bagpipes, and a basket case Scottish broadsword, who's known for the motto, any officer who goes into action without his sword is improperly dressed. That's why they issue, a sa- issue you a saber. Yep. But, so, but yes. So we're basically making our way slowly through the grass. And um uh, across what I would like to see called Exhibit A, where we find a tree that has that has a repeating rifle, a German repeating leaned up against it. We're all like, huh. Where is the owner of said rifle? And Marth, who was an absolute mad genius, and decided to put fucking sensory boost on his damn gas mask, is like, oh I can find I found the dude. He's dead. And a goddamn skeleton. Like Oh, which, by the way, in case you never took forensics or anything, um, people don't skeletonize after like a week, normally. Nope. nope. So we're like, um, that's uh, not cool. That is very weird. What the fuck happened? So you and see, I saw him a little bit. I saw him a little bit. Find out he's been there. For, he's been there for a little while. He was taken by surprise, and we find a. Uh, um, the cat prints. No. Well, I'm like, no. But uh, guess what? We're on a fucking mission. And we're going to see it through. So Ulrich, a.k.a. Marth, and his mad survival skills, and his mad perception skills, search beast through the grass. Yeah, we actually talked about this. This became a plot point because you were considering rolling some mission equipment that um, Ulrich is not good at people stuff. He's an isolate, so he's, charisma is one of his lowest stats. Um, yeah. But his perception is crazy good, and he has a lot of bonuses to it, like with his with his enchanted um, gas mask now that has sensory boost, so he can permanently have like super sense, you know, mm-hmm. superhuman senses at all times. Um, you know, he's he's a wilderness survivor. He has always been your guy to roll navigation or survival and stuff. Yeah, I guess like for like me and him buddy copying this, like like we got into the habit of actually starting to compliment each other like pretty well. Um, but yeah, so at this point, we just stop hacking because, uh, there's a camera afoot and we just start, um, like just going through the fucking grass. Yeah. I remind you at this point that, um, tactical movement is a rule. You can move while crouching as opposed to going prone. You can't, it uh, limits your max speed. So in combat, you can't like sprint or charge, but you get a bonus to not being heard as you move and you get a slight benefit to being shot because you're crouched down. So... Like, uh, that's what we did. We um, crouched walk. You know, we pushed circle. Everyone crouched, and then we moved forward. Marv's in the lead. You know, he's you know, real close to the ground. You know, moving, moving the grass out, looking for the big grass and everything. And we came across. Um, let's see, it was the yeah, it was the um, we came across the ruins of a house. Because that's we another invest- um, battlefield condition is that the I once again I didn't tell you this because you couldn't see it, but the village was was ruined, so it was in. Yeah. Decay and dilapidated. Yeah. So we come across a ruined house, and we go inside, and there are fucking corpses in here. Like, legit actual fucking corpses. Bad enough that my XO, who has the trauma and necrophobia, can't enter the house. Which I think is good, personally. I think it's good that my companion's traumas has come up, because, um, like, I think it's weird for me to have quirks if they don't ever come up. Because he's really doing nothing. Like, positive one, negative one. So the fact that like this came up, my EXO could not actually act and do stuff in here, I was like, I would be pleased with that. I know I'm weird. I didn't, I'm didn't. i one of those people, like, I want to be disadvantaged sometimes. Because if I am disadvantaged, I overcome that, I'm that much better for it. All that train of thought. Um, but we get inside the house, and... Um, bodies have been burned. Like, they're so burned that the ID, we can't even recover the ID tags. The only way we've been able to find the bodies is if we had the dental records, which we didn't. So we're like, well, guys, I'm pretty sure you guys were small, but uh, gotta take a guess. And, you know, quick investigations, alright, so we think. Right. Do you can chimeras breathe fire? And then we're like, yes, the lion head can breathe fire. And we're like, No! Uh, th- this is the point I think where hopefully I- I'm hitting my stride as a GM. Where like the-, the skeleton was good because I was like, "Well, make me a fear test." There's a skeleton, man. Uh, yeah. but this was just like, 
yeah, so there's a there's a hole in the back, uh, and these guys are all just dead, and everything's burned in here, and it and it sucks, and you don't feel good. Yeah. So we get through, clear out, start striking again. This time we get into the village proper, and we find a clearing where the missing recon team had left um, all their supplies. We took yeah, they, a tally. They we put down some of their rucks. They built a campfire that was out. They, you know, rolled out some bed rolls. Yeah, but there's no guys. We start thinking like, all right, how many recon guys over there? And discovered that we only found about half of them. So, um, all right, it's like, all right, we gotta keep looking until we find like the rest of them. We go to the largest building in the um in the village that was left in there, and we open it up, and it's a fucking massacre. There was an actual fight here. There was blood. The Corpses, cuts, and runs on them. There were bullet holes everywhere. It doesn't take him. It doesn't take him. Um, doesn't take much of a uh, scientist to figure out what the fuck happened here. And at this point, we pretty much say like, if a bunch of men, I think it was like three, or four men, you know, shoot, shooting at this thing wasn't enough to take it down. I'm pretty sure that we were pretty sure that there were no survivors left. So it's at well, this yeah, point, well, yeah, because you you done your mental arithmetic and like I I figured there I said there were like there's like a dozen guys, you know, that's a it's mm-hmm. a pretty good sized squad. And yeah. you'd found, I think at this point, like uh, nine or ten of them or, at, you know, somewhere in that ballpark. And you're like, OK, so the, the the last guys are probably sentries like that first guy. So they were out in the woods. Do we really need to go through this grass and confirm that those guys are dead because they were by themselves? They're probably dead. Yeah. So we've confirmed the chimera because it's the only thing that fits all these bills. We had to make the choice because technically, technically. Our mission was to locate and find out what happened to the recon guy, determine if whether a one of our opposing countries was invading. Yeah, by actually, the letter of our mission. Uh, this also has, this hasn't been posted yet, but I for the actual plays on the site now, I usually write up the mission objectives and post them as the, like the video background. Mm-hmm. Uh, so let me see. That would be under oh. So this was Operation Hidden Eyes. Yeah. So objective number one. Recon the target village for threats and signs of enemy activity. Two, investigate the area for missing friendly infantry. Three, report back for uh, before 0600 the next day. And that was yep. like, that was something you didn't need to necessarily hit, but obviously mm-hmm. it would be more of a bureaucratic fuck up and like a big deal if you didn't hit that objective. Which is usually how the, the secondary and tertiary objectives go. They're like, if you don't hit these, you'll be, you won't be like, court-martialed, but if you miss them and you could have hit them, you'll be in a bad way. Like, I I phrased it as, like, if you waited until after 0600, you'd have to have a damn good explanation for the major. Mm -hmm. So, technically, yes, you had accomplished objectives 1 and 2, and were in time to accomplish 3. You had investigated, you had reconned the village, and concluded that there was not, in fact, enemy activity there, and you'd found those guys who done did died. Mm -hmm. So, but... Now we had uh, confirmed that there is a military threat, more a magical threat. And, like, we had to, I had to decide whether or not we go hunt this down and remove threats, or we just leave it be. And, like, apparently chimeras are agents of the enemy, the big E enemy. Yeah, so here, this is a... This doesn't necessarily come up a lot in our in our RP, so I'll I'll say some stuff about the background. So, in the setting, um, I've known for a long time, but it took me a while to get to the details. But in the setting, there is a force known as the capital E enemy, the enemy, the enemy of mankind. They are some demonic force or whatever, or something. Nobody knows where they're from. Nobody knows what their deal is. Mostly because every major philosophy and religion on the planet is like, don't talk to those guys. Don't don't do it. Don't. Uh, be friends with them, don't shake their hands, don't give them five bucks for the subway, nothing. <laughs> um, but they exist, theoretically, and supposedly for about a thousand years, um, there was a, uh, in, in setting history, the actual crusades were actual crusades to repel demonic forces, at least the first couple, which supposedly worked. Uh, theoretically, every major uh, form of establishment where the enemy was in a human government working with human agents was destroyed and subverted. And now there are no... There are definitely not any daemons out there. Um, the enemy has a couple different agents. Like um, one of them is their what are called foot soldiers. Those are uh, goblins, ogres, and the like, which are like 
they tried to make cheap knockoff humans, but they're a little too cheap, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, um, inset and goblins are like, they can't innovate at all. They can only scavenge and repurpose. So, um, actually, this is in one of the rewards. Uh, you can get goblin arrows, which are shittier to use, uh, but they have the, uh, the crippling condition, so they cause more severe critical injuries, because that's what goblins do. They make crappy arrows, but they hurt a lot. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, like, that's one of their types. Uh, another type is the Beastmen, which is they tried to create animals which were like human or modify animals to be like humans, and some of those worked, and some of those didn't. Um, and you guys haven't really run into any Beastmen, so we'll, we'll see if that comes up. Uh, but the third type is Chimerae, uh, with the plural, which is, refers to both the classical Chimera and lots of other similars, like, um, uh, like a, uh, a griffin or a hippogriffin, that type of creature. Uh, you know, basilisk, which is just like, so the enemy using their dark powers, uh, just cobbled together some animal bits and they're really freaky. So th- those are bad news because those are just animals and predators made to hunt humans. So they're, they're a big deal. Like mages will, you know, if you find like a wyvern nest or something, mages will come in and spook those off and try and get them out of their territory because those are actual living weapons made to, like I said, hunt and kill humans. So yeah, you found one of those, and you're like, hmm, this is bad. Mm Mm-hmm. But I am an honorable sword, and I will not brook um, the enemy gallivanting, killing our Also, especially because, uh, as as we've mentioned, you are one of the few people in setting who knows that the enemy definitely does, in fact, still exist, literally. They are not mm -hmm. a metaphor. Daemons are real. Uh, One of them uh, gave you a bad touch just a couple, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. And uh, I'm going to do my due diligence. So, you know, I strap on my big boy armor. It's it's real big. And I was like, all right, we're going to hunt this thing down. Yeah, Mark. one of your one of your advanced careers is ironclad. You are, uh, what, what is the special ability for that called? Walking tank or something? Uh, like something like that. It's, you, you once it again, are like one of the few soldiers who's running around in like a rough equivalent to full plate armor. Because normally... That's not worth it, but you uh you make it look good, so. Oh, I do look good. Oh yeah, it's walking tank. Yeah, uh, that's what's called. I uh, um yeah, it's because like with all my bonuses, which I am keep putting bonuses on it because um we are in this vicious cycle of I don't want to get hurt and Omega wants to hurt me. Well, yeah, like you said, you, you some you want that challenge because otherwise it doesn't feel like you're you're succeeding. So I yep I I try and bust my chops a little sometimes to actually push through and and. Make make threats and encounters matter because if it was too easy, then there's no point, right? Yep. But um, and sometimes you guys you take a, a threat and you do dumb stuff to like come at it from a right angle, like your halo drop, which is just like <laughs> you were just like, I do not want to besiege this fortress. <laughs> and you were like, Wait a minute, parachutes exist. Can I jump out of a plane? I'm like, So nobody's really officially doing that yet. But I mean, I'm not going to say that as a player, you can't put two and two together. That would be silly. <laughs> But, so, um, we put Ulrich on the track in the beast again, and we get to the point where we know it's here, and we're here, and we're just going to have that moment where we're like, oh god. And then I actually does something I think was actually pretty, like, smart, because the players are so tense that a mecha is like, alright, you guys are pretty fucking tank, make a fear test. Right, that's one of the rules of the system, when you're confronted by a source of fear, you make a willpower test to not freak out. And depending on how, if you fail it, depending on how badly you fail, this response can scale from just, like, you start or jump a little bit to um, what actually happened, which is, despite the fact that this guy, um, Lucky, is a little bit min-maxed because he's got two special quirks which give people standing close to him a bonus on willpower tests, which a fear test is, um, Mars character Ulrich still blows it. Uh, he, he, I think he missed it by, like, 10 or something. Yeah. Um, and then, so that means I roll on the random result, and, uh, or I don't remember, somebody rolled on the random table, and I read the result, and um, he switched to his SMG at this point, uh, which he has a pretty baller uh, SMG, you know, he, he paid extra for the drum mag and the, and the, the foregrip and everything, so he, he's ready to fight in some trenches if you have to. Mm-hmm. Uh, or grasslands, apparently. Yeah, um, so I, I, and so he fails, so I, I tell him what he sees, I'm like, all right, you're looking into the grass. You see three pairs of eyes in the reflection of, of the captain's lantern, and you flip out. 
Um, and he gets the result where he makes an attack on his maximum rate of fire at full power. So he just, I assume, because, you know, we're on mics, we don't want to actually yell, but I assume he fires wildly, screaming into the grass. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this, this, is the, this is kind of the tension break, because then it just, it goes. Um, and, yeah. Do, do you want to describe this fight, or do you want me to go through it? Uh, you go through it. I'm trying so, to like, I got, well, this my is the first time shit. I think you guys have actually... I've shot at you with, like, light machine guns before, but I think this is the first time you guys in this campaign have used an auto-fire weapon. Um, and this is, I think, where a, we set up a good precedent for how, how much of a big deal the Chimera is, because Marth rolls crazy good on his full auto and gets, like, all six hits. You can hit a maximum number of six times with auto with his SMG is auto-fire. So, basically, the idea is... You use X number of bullets, you can hit X number of times. You get a slight bonus, so you're more likely to hit at least once. And if you roll really well, you can get a lot of hits in. Um, the thing about submachine guns is, especially in this this era, um, they're using pistol caliber bullets, right? That's how those are made. Yeah. So it's not a very big, heavy hitting bullet. But you shoot a lot of them. Um, and he's got the drum mag, so he doesn't care that he's, you know, dumping half, half a dozen bullets around. Uh, so he hits with all six. And his damage is really swingy, and I think he. There are some of them that I'm like, okay, so the the toughness of this creature is like eight. Um, so just uh, total those up, and anything that doesn't hit an eight or so does nothing. So a couple of these bullets just bounce off this creature, um, and those that do go through do very little damage, right? Um, this is not yet he because he didn't have time to set up buffs, so this isn't when he starts doing loads of critical damage, which is later and hilarious. Um, So, but basically, that's how this combat starts. He has dumped a round of ammo in there, and um, Orbeck's a really good at initiative. He's he's taken all the bonuses. He's really good at it. Before this happened, you bought a new ability to make allies better at initiative, so he's rolling crazy good. He goes first. uh, Because he failed the fear test, he's only got a half action. He uses it to magic up his bullets and does nothing, basically. Then you do you, um, and with sword drawn, um, you, um, actually, no, Marth, I think he rush casting er- stone fangs, that's right, because this actually almost crippled it. Um, yeah. So he rushes casting, because that's something you can do. Normally, uh, normally a spell or a magic talent takes a certain number of actions in-game, but you can rush it for a penalty. Um, for his earth spells, Marth is really min-max because he's got familiars, which are elemental moats, so they give him a bonus for certain types of spell casting. And so he rushes as a half-action stone fangs to make spikes leap out of the ground and stab this thing. Uh, And it's another auto-fire attack. So he does a decent number of hits. Uh, The damage is really swingy, though, so a couple of these do, once again, absolutely nothing. But a decent number of them get through that, for me, it's it's on its last legs. Um, And then this Mm -hmm. guy gets to go. And he does him. You also, I think, rush cast temper on your sword because you want to charge, and that's a full action. Yep. So you bum rush the like you know um i think like 10 meters across the ground and just you roll really well as usual and just Mm -hmm. bury your sword in this thing's chest uh you didn't really need to go that far i think it had like two wounds at this point but you go all out um so you're standing there it slumps over you're like thank god it's done me sitting back in my chair i'm like oh that went by too fast i didn't get to do anything fun it didn't even get to act (laughs) yeah and so then i'm like uh, because you'd call for reinforcements, then I'm like, I, I'd do the the full blown like Velociraptor moment. You get a call on the radio, which is like, Captain, there's something coming behind you. Uh, and uh, another second Chimera just leaps out of the bushes and tries to do like a flying tackle on you. Yep. Um, I kind of wish I'd remembered that I'd written a special like pounce attack rule and given it to the Chimera at this point because that would have been, I think, more thematic. I just had it do like a charge attack. Uh, but it was still fun because yeah. you like. You do a swinging parry, you bring your shield across and, like, block its claws, um, and because Chimeras have extra actions, it comes around and wraps its... Because you were because you were so paranoid about the poison. Uh, yep. I, the snake tail comes around and bites you in the leg. You managed to tough out, the, tough out the toxic test, but still, you got bit a little bit through your armor. And so, now you're in a bad way. You're engaged in melee with this thing. Um, you're, you're completely guffing it up. Uh, your companion is there with you, but you're, like, blocked in with these guys, right? Yeah. Um, now this is when uh, Ulrich fast casts Shatter Rounds to do lots of critical damage because he um, 
he wants to shoot it, even though you're in melee, uh, mm -hmm. which is good for him because uh, he does shoot it and he hits and some of them miss, but he does a decent amount of damage and he uh, does manage to do a decent amount of critical damage. He breaks one of its legs. He gives it a lot of bleed. It's going to bleed out soon. So it gets desperate. It gets to... Let's see. Did it go before you? Yeah. Yeah. I think because we rerolled initiative, but um, it uh, it it spits hot fire at you, which um, I a lot of NPCs and mages of war have optional tanks. You can give them different qualities to do different things at different times. So I wanted to play up the the poison of this one because these guys were so paranoid. They gave the GM ideas. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I give it the ideas. special bonus where its breath it becomes paralyzing breath, so it gains the stun and toxic tags on its flame breath, but just still flame. So it's kind of like a hot caustic or pyrophoric substance. That's scary. Uh, but it just the um, first it tries to hit you with the ram head because uh, I was figuring if if I can like because that has a knockback on it. If it can like push you back out of melee, it might turn to like shoot fire at Ulrich because it. You know, he it it's just shot it up a lot, but uh, that doesn't work. You just you soak the damage, and you resist the yep, stun and the I knockback. Headbutt, I headbutted the goat, and I won't. So you're you're standing still there. So it's like, okay, well, it has to hit you back now. It has to try and get rid of you because you're right there, and it can't move. Right, it, one of its it's one of its back legs is busted. It can't go anywhere fast. Uh, I think with a shattered or a broken leg, you have like halved movement and stuff and super huge penalties so it's not getting out of this situation anytime soon so it breathes fire at you um, there was some confusion because I even said this on air I'm like I'm looking at my notes and I have no idea what I'm doing here I wrote that it just hits you but there's like nothing else that does that so we rolled with it in the moment and I fixed it back mm -hmm. later I just I just gave the chimera a ranged score so it could make a breath attack as a ranged attack but because it's a cone um, this is one of the few times that it affects both of you and your companion so yep. you have to roll evasion to get out of the way. Or um, I think you actually barrier. Yeah. But you, you move to soak it up and you work. Your companion has to has to tuck and roll out of the way because her spell casting isn't great, I think. Nope. Um, she fails. So for the first time in the campaign, your oh, a camp, uh, companion actually takes damage. So she gets blasted with a decent amount of damage on the on the dice. Um she fails the stun test. Uh so she was, uh, I think, so she was stunned. She lost her next action. Uh, or no, she fails the shock test because she took half her wounds. Yeah. Um, and she also fails the toxic test, so she's poisoned. So out of character, you know that there's a ticking clock that his companion is harshly wounded and she will soon fall over. Um, or she's passed out unconscious, and so she has, it's entirely possible that she'll die the next time I roll some dice. Um, and that, that kind of flipped the script a little, so... Um, well, Ulrich goes first next. Um, so actually, I think you did try to attack it, and you just you whiffed one, and then you did a little damage on one. Because uh, Chimeras are big, beefy boys. Like they they have a <laughs> they have a lot of wounds for this game. Like wh how many wounds do you have maximum right now, Lucky? What's your what's your full HP number? I'm assuming that Lucky either does not hear me or he's looking. I hear me. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Yeah, it's eighteen. There. Eighteen. Okay. Right. Uh, so for reference, the Chimera has 30 wounds, uh, and it has a lot of toughness. So um, I think you just slashed it up and put it on its last legs, but didn't kill it. Uh, so yeah. Ulrich goes at the top again, uh, and the question is just, do I want to wait to let the cat... No, I want to I end this right now. So he just dumps another round of fire and does it in, like, one bullet. Scratch damage. Finishes it off. Shoots it in that darn left leg again. But yeah, so that that's the that, I think, is the final tension break. The Chimera goes down. Um, you called for a medic, so because you brought medic units and your reinforcements, they just, like, airlift you out. Um, you asked if your guys had bomb racks, and they're like, yeah, probably. You would've, you got to equip them. So you have mm -hmm. them bomb the, like, the bomb corpses. Bomb those corpses! Yep. And you fly home. Mm-hmm. And that was just, that was just an, an interesting study in, in tension and stuff. That's good. And like, I'm, I'm glad have, it like, landed, like... because I, like I said, there, there are times when I feel like Especially you, because, well, it's funny, because your character was very squishy to start. Um, I feel like since you, you kind of built your paranoia as being a tank, it is sometimes hard to hit you now. Mm -hmm. um, but like, literally, you had a duel with an enemy officer, and he couldn't touch you until you did an honorable thing and took your armor off. Well, see, you know, here's the, like, well, no, see, what you did, like, honestly, like, 
like honestly, this is what you kind of did is you di- you didn't just put me in danger, you put my companions in danger. Well, yeah, that was something. in this situation. So she was a lot squishier than you, but that's that's hard to do. Yeah. Because the game is deliberately written so, so that your your companions don't take a lot of fire unless you're being hit with a lot of area attacks or your companions doing something that deliberately draws attention to them. Yeah. But it's one of those things. It's like no matter how, like, how strong I like, everyone has weakness. Mine's like even though there's as much armor as I had, it's like my friends are not as squishy and I am very much committed to keeping my comrade alive. Um, yeah, very actually, so. I think you t- you take like a minus twenty on on fear test to see soldiers under your command bite it. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, no, you you're playing your role very well because you're you're the CEO, you're the captain now, and it is it is not good for you to see men and women under your command get hurt. But I'm just saying that like in like a personal combat, like you literally had to do the honorable thing and like hold on, I'm gonna take my armor off just because a a normal human wielding a saber could not necessarily hurt you very easily through your armor. He gave it a damn good shot and did nothing. Uh, which is why you are no longer, why after that you didn't spend a lot of time fighting guys one-on-one who weren't super magic or bullshit. Yeah. And, uh, oh, you're, well, you'll have some fun in the next mission. I, uh, I rolled some fun stuff and kind of took that to inspire me as usual, so, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, this is actually a good. This uh, is a good yeah. time. I just want to ask you for the sake of role playing. Like, how do you feel like your relationship with the major is? Because I feel like the major asks you to do dumb stuff that is not in your mission parameters a lot, and you just you know you salute and nod and say yeah, yes, yes, captain slash major. To be honest, it feels like a, like my impression of her. She feels like a little sister who's way too high maintenance. She is a little high maintenance. I should probably play that up a little bit more, but. I mean, she is a prodigy. We've talked about this. Like, yeah, she she's a seventeen year old kid who made ace on her first day. Um, she is like, like, like she is like, somewhat uh, inspired by Tanya, but is obviously not as like meta as Tanya is as a character. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. just like the young prodigy, so she's really good at her job. It's, it's like she like the way I face her as a manager is. I like to imagine that like she handpicked me for like her platoon or whatever and stuff because. Like and got me out of like got me out of the front, so I have like immense loyalty to her. To the it's I wouldn't say it's fanatical, but um, I would like you know I you know I would definitely put my line my life on the line for her. Mm-hmm. Um, I Which was is good because this... your original unit designation was you guys were her honor guard. Yeah. So like yeah, if like at any point the major becomes captured, it's like I will go through hell and high water to get her back. Even if at like even if high command says you know don't get her, I'm like I'm gonna go get her. I was like because I was I was actually thinking about that the other day. It's like how do I feel about the major? Like I don't like and like I know I I really like her. Yeah, because like it's I said, the like, the the major has high demands of you, but at the same time she's also a very reasonable. Uh, authority figure. She has never uh, tried to shoot at you with your own artillery before, for instance. Unlike other majors, like we can name she in the relies on. I like to believe that she relies on me a lot because she believes a lot. Well, that would be fair because she has seen you pull off some dumb stuff. <laughs> you you have set unfortunate expectations for your commanding officer. It's like the uh, the the yeah. Scotty thing where he tells Jordy, "Oh no, uh, exaggerate." You know, say it'll take forty hours, and then when it takes four hours, it's a miracle. Yeah. You could learn a little from that school of leadership, but no, you're you're way too straight laced for that. It's like the the former captain now major says, "Hey, I need you to single handedly box with Satan," and you're like, "Okay, if that's what you want, sir, ma'am, yep. I'll go I'll go punch the devil." I will. You may have to actually punch the devil at some point. I don't know. You so, really la- you really latched onto quote unquote Nvidia, so she has to come back now. Yeah, well, that's what you get for making a memorable NPC. No, um, well, that's the point. Like, uh, the idea with her character and the reason why I gave her a specific name was to be like, no, I, I want this character to stick out because I, we did. I mean, we did that a little bit with the quote unquote demon train, where like the train was a golem and it was semi sentient and like ran on its own power. But and obviously there was some very nasty stuff going on in that in the mm-hmm. Scythian front games. You uh, guys fought an ogre, but mm-hmm. like I, the. There was supposed to be a more mystical meta plot, but that like was for way in the future. This one, I definitely wanted to be like, 
no, let's play up the weird magic stuff a little bit and like actually be like, there's there's wider stuff going on in this world, which is not good. The uh, the enemy prophets will you guys you know uh, exchange rifle blows. Not that you're going to be able to convince anybody of that because as as the major has talked with you, you know you're claiming to be the fir- the first guy to see a demon in a thousand years, so they're mm. going to be like, hmm. Is he just crazy, or are there demons? He's probably just crazy. Oh, that's why I gotta rack up achievements, do a good job, and keep my ear to the ground preparing. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I mentioned this because the, the spoilers, the major is once again gonna ask you to do something probably crazy and unprecedented that may or may not be outside your skill set. Again, uh, this time you'll have prep time at least. I've made sure I in my writing. I'm like, okay, so there's no time limit on this. It's just. So I'm going to I'm going to give you time that you can actually make your rolls to prepare. Okay, cool. Uh which is good because you're going to need to because like I said by do- I said this year you're, you're going to need to make some some meaningful supply choices. Yeah, you're you're going to need to actually plan this mission and I deliberately wrote it to be like there's a lot of ways you could interpret these orders so you need to figure out what it is you're going to do about it. Oh man. Cuz theoretically yeah. there's a lot of there with the way the way there are certain rules, interactions, and certain abilities you have, there are some interesting and or dumb stuff. I mean, dumb is in like, man, that's really cool, but that's not like a very soldiery thing of you to do. Um, like, for instance, because you you got a new career as Saber, um, which, yes, that is a reference, uh, <laughs> you have the ability Great Cleave. So anytime you wield a bladed weapon, you have Sunder now, which means you do full penetration to vehicles and structures and objects. So theoretically, you could do some interesting interactions where you could, like, try and make called shots to, like, cut the trends of a tank. Not the tanks exist yet. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to move the story forward, but also I don't think armored vehicles have a reason to appear in this campaign yet. If you guys hold out for, like, six more months, if the campaign runs that long, then it'll be, like, maybe they can ship armored vehicles, like, a year early down here to try and get you. But for now, it doesn't make much sense to advance that part of the timeline. Mm -hmm. So there's... Maybe, like, armored trucks and cars will be a thing that show up, because that's not really complex and not, like, a special role. Like, the reason why tanks were invented was to bust trenches. It was, God, we've been sitting here for literally two years. We've moved a couple of inches since these trenches were built. How do we break through the enemy lines? What if we built a literal all-terrain armored box covered in machine guns? And thus the tank was born. Uh, and interestingly, despite the fact that I think, like, because of World War II, a lot of people associate tanks and armor with the Germans, uh, Germany never really got their tank game together in World War I. Um, the Brits were the kings of tanks then, because they invented it and, and made a lot of the different iterations. But yeah, so, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a fun mission where you're gonna have to pick how to make some options, and maybe have to make some logistics rolls to try and do better than your standard equipment. Which is great, because that means you can fail, and I can give you a typewriter. And you'll be like, what the fuck am I going to do with this? I'm going to hit it and explode. Actually, that's a good question. None of, are any of you trained in demolitions right now? Nope. We have a demolition guy. You do have at least one demo guy. You you command a couple of platoons now. You've probably got a few demo guys. Yeah. Who you knows? Maybe they're in our support team. So. Uh, I mean, your support team is, is basically tech, so they're like, yeah, they probably have some guys who know how to cross some wires. Yeah. And I do love that oh. persistent stuff comes back. Like because I randomly rolled NPC attitudes, the the guy who ended up in charge of your your former ish platoon who now involved into the the quote unquote flying rifles, like, you know, a flying shock troop unit. Uh he rolled the sneaky demeanor, so I'm like, hmm. Alright, this is the sneaky guy. You always reference the sneaky guy. This is him. He's he's <laughs> he's an LT now and he's in charge of that unit. So now you know that guy. He's got a name even now and just You've you've built up rapport with that character over time. Yeah, we took him up. We took him a lot of places. It's because you, once again, you guys r- ended up running a lot of stealth missions just because that's the way the dice handed out. Uh, you also, I think, semi informed it because you picked as your second career after a veteran commando. I wanted, I wanted, um, I wanted to be able to get saber <laughs> and ironclad. Yeah, you wanted, to, you wanted to be able to get get some ad- other advanced careers, and also, I think you aren't necessarily afraid of the fact that it that it has a very blade focused special ability. You know. Not that you're likely to attack in many people from unawares, but it's got a thing. Uh so yeah, you you technically made it part of your backstory that you were a sneaky guy before. Mhm. Um I was, now I'm not. Yeah. 
Uh, and that's, that kind of goes into the thing you said where you, you feel, and we could establish that as, as your actual backstory because a lot of you guys probably were handpicked for your talents or experience for this operation because mm-hmm. you had a, a very famous commander who was like really good and, and, you know, got a huge promotion right away, got medals, stuff like that. Uh, but you, we established that you used to be on the Western Front. So you, you used to be in the very real shit of this war. Uh, doing the 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 worst kind of fighting. Hmm. So yeah, you're you're actually that's a good question. Is Wolfgang glad to be here? Is he enjoying his summer vacation? Wish it wasn't so hot and wish he didn't have to fight chimeras. But you know what? It's better than being in a truck, trenches, drinking dirty water, and wondering if the guy next to me is gonna die due to a random bomb on the fucking head when he peeks out to get like, across the trenches. That's why they have periscopes. No joke, periscopes in the gear list. Yeah, I know. But yes, no, wonder. that's literally why they invented the trench periscope. Uh, trench warfare is great. Oh yeah, no, like, like, as a uh, horrible, um, uh, as Wolfgang is, he does have, he is trained in defense and camouflage and in subterfuge. Yeah, you've, I think that's a good point. The, you're, you're a character who has kind of reinforced his personal sense of honor because you've seen some, some ways that war is really bad for people's psyche. Um, you're, yeah. I don't think we, I don't know if we've firmly established it, but I've always felt that your, your XO, your companion, who has probably been with you since you went through military academy, you know, you probably mm-hmm. met her in, in officer training, mm-hmm. uh, if not beforehand, but like you, you went through training together. I've always assumed that she picked up her necrophobia, her trauma on the battlefield by seeing lots of yep. dead people. Yep. So like you've, you've clearly been adjacent to some shit and, uh, I feel like that makes sense for your character to have just decided. Yeah, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna engage warfare the way the book says to, and I'm gonna get so good at it that I can. Yep, and it's literally one of those things because like I um like a, like a, like a, like I like to call back to this, but World War One is when it was a major turning point in warfare and how it was waged, and people just fucking try shit like uh like chemical weapons, like the Germans with chemical attacks, flamethrowers warfare all this stuff Ar- yeah the armored it vehicles was- also the figuring how to stop armored vehicles like they had to literally invent anti-tank warfare on the fly yeah like no so like uh, world war one was about uh, venting a lot of way a lot of ways to kill people faster so your guys don't die first yeah because we did hit this such an interesting deadlock scenario right like yeah. the trenches form everybody builds in uh conventional cavalry is immediately useless like mm-hmm. this is the last warfare where anybody war where anybody tries to do cavalry. I think the only people who were still using active cavalry units was the the Russian Empire on the on the Eastern Front actually managed to get some cavalry charges. And like technically the Polish still had cavalry units which which were armed with like uh lances and stuff, but they they did not survive into the next world war. So like huh. cavalry's done. Um you know, armor is invented, mechanized infantry is invented. Um, line infantry is practically obsolete. Uh, that's actually a thing I included in the, um, in the, one of the possible unit specializations. If you're from, like, a country that's not as advanced in warfare right away, you could play a line infantry unit and be like, yeah, so we're supposed to draw battle lines and form up and shoot at people? But that's really outdated. That's not how you do stuff anymore. And that line's gonna get bombed or just built down by a machine gun nest. On the plus side, you, the... The you know the line infantry does give you bonuses to stick together in a tight team, but still yes no it's it's very much a you should not be doing that especially as mages. Mages are kind of my metaphor for while there is actual air and and armor power and everything. Mages kind of fill that role at any time period in the timeline and very flexible because like you can go in water, you can go in the air, you can go on the ground, and so a a. A mage in strikers is basically like a tank. You have bear. You're like a tank right now, basically. That's why you have the walking tank power. You have crazy good armor for infantry weapons. You're really hard to shoot because you have a shield and you're highly mobile. And if you wanted to, you could be carrying a heavy, a heavier weapon. And um, in in the ground units in strikers, it. they can take weapon mounts, so you can slap a mortar or like a, a regular medium machine gun on those and still stay highly mobile. So those guys are scary. Uh, we f- I finally, a while, a while ago, I think we talked about this in the last episode, added the ability for flying mages to just drop bombs. So mm-hmm. now you are the full-blown air package. 
Well, uh, like, we're, we're basically interceptor crabs because we, we actually did some math on, like, how fast we can fly and how mm-hmm. high we can fly. Like, um, because I did some uh, conspiracy comparisons with, um, like, some of the Pacific Northwest's uh, mountains. And, like, yeah, like, I can only fl- fly up a kilometer up. That's, like, half a fucking mile. Like, and there are mountains which are, like, between, like, three to four kilometers up. So, no, I can't even fly over a mountain. And but even if you could, this respirator gear is not light in this time period. So, yeah, it's, no, no, it's not but easy like, to do that. But it's like I'm not flying like among the clouds, you know, you know, soaking in that. Yeah, I that, actually that, I had uh, this question. I was trying to I was trying to figure out, hey, when's how's how low can clouds go? Um, Apparently, science is not helpful on this. Literally, everyone's <laughs> just like, so the low clouds start forming at the cloud layer at below 2000 meters. How how much below? Two thousand me. Okay, thanks. So theoretically, <laughs> somewhere below two clicks up is where "quote unquote" low clouds form. How low to the ground? I don't fucking know. Uh, but yes, you you cannot Elevation. easily hit the cloud layer. No. So, but we can fly real fucking fast. Yeah, and I might if if you guys continue growing and uh, depending on how long it takes you to grow in power, I might have to adjust that down uh, because you. Theoretically, um, because Marth has a high speed unit, he's close to going supersonic. Yeah, he is. Which is, I think, he's like a he little bit like of time. But I think if he hits like, um, hits uh, will fifty, he might be able to break the sound barrier. Maybe. Yeah, but he, and, like, you'd have to, and, you, and, you, and you have to take um, mobility effort, I think. Yeah. Uh, at which point, I did say that okay. So even if you can hit that, you probably don't want to do that without special safety equipment because that's you know. You're a dude traveling faster than the speed of sound in your magic plane legs. Yeah, how many G's is that? I don't know. It's a lot, but like, like we said, like you guys, you guys have some technical advances. You have are very good. Like, um, Ulrich bought a search lamp, which just plugs into your mobility unit. You guys have wearable throat mic radios, which are short range, but they're still, you know, man portable wirelesses. They just have to be plugged into a magic engine to work. And there's a couple Shoot, of even- devices like that. But shoot, even nowadays we don't have a lot of things to resist cheese. Like honestly, yeah, like a, um, lot of tra- a lot of training. Like you have special clothing that basically forces your blood to keep circulating, mm-hmm. and like um, like oxygen rich um, air tanks. You know, you you can stay fucking as, as your blood is like yeah, like you into your legs. I think that's covered. That like your top speed is still your top speed. That's like if you're not out of out of structured time and you're just trying to make an overland flight. Yeah. Like you, because you have an efficient unit, um, and have mobility unit master, you would not want to push up to like the six hundred kilometers per hour you can hit if you were going to be in a combat situation. That's like a I'm doing a full turn and burn and I want to get somewhere fast in a straight line. Uh. Not like we want to do combat maneuvers because, like you said, if you tried to do some some sharp turns at, at that speed, the G forces would kick your ass. Yeah, no, you would literally black out. Which is, by the way, why every flying actually, I think every mage has a rescue hook, but that's why flying mages have them. So you can help out buddies who do dumb stuff, or enemies who dumb do dumb stuff. Or yeah, our enemies. Uh, you get. I think in the campaign, you guys have actually rescued an enemy who passed out mid flight. He lost positive control. So. As I said, I've seen some shit, so I don't want any more deaths than there need to be. And that's the way I'm sticking to it. Yeah. And yeah, that's one of your one of your default equipments is I I tried to be sensible with everybody, so everybody gets some level of uniform. You know, which so if you're a sub mage, you don't have to worry about your diving gear that's assigned to you. You have a diving suit and the helmet so you can breathe. Otherwise it would be dumb. Uh and you know, everybody's got a wristwatch, which doubles as a compass, and I made sure to point out that, I mean, in the in the real life time period, they'd be radium illuminated, but they're ethereum illuminated, so you don't have to worry about radioactivity. Yay! But you have an illuminated watch face, so you can sync, you can literally synchronize watches. Um, you guys have flying goggles, so you don't need to worry about you know getting a bug in your eye. Uh, ev- and every mage comes with, well, every soldier comes with a. Uh, grooming kit and a mess kit, so you always have a couple of bits and bobs if you need them around. And just, like, they're useful. Um, and they build fluff, I think. Like, the fact that you're like, yeah, I got a, I got a needle and thread. Of course you do. It's in your grooming kit. It's so you can repair your uniform. Mm-hmm. Set your buttons back on. Whatever you need. You can polish your boots and your buttons. Um, the, the mess yeah, kit is good. like... Except, 
you have all your utensils and plates and stuff. It also includes your your water thermos. Stay hydrated. Yeah, that's very important, especially for you guys because you're in a hot you're in a hot climate. And I when I randomly generated the campaign, I realized it was high summer. So it's well, it's the middle of the quote unquote winter month. It's like dead heat summer, and you're in a desert country. So that's why I tell everyone they're in fucking tropical uniforms. And here I go running around in fucking heavy ass metal plates, and I'm about to put on a fucking cloak. I die. <laughs> yeah, we'll 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 see if you have to ever stand out in the sun in the sun. We might actually make some some rolls for extreme heat. Mm-hmm. That'd be good. As you Let's literally bake in your armor. Let's see here: uh, wrist wand, wearable radio. You get one survival ration, rescue yeah. hook, mess kit, grooming kit, focus, and the backup Ethereum core. Yeah. So ever everybody has spare fuel. Everybody's got a rescue hook. Everybody's got a radio. Because as cool as it is to be like. You can only talk verbally. It's also like, that's really annoying. Also, um, once again, inspired by Tanya, they had radios and stuff, and it was cool. So, like, it, it works for the genre to be like, no, you're, you're magic. You have a little high-powered unit. You can get a little antenna to reach out and touch somebody. Makes sense to me. So, and we also still have, like, the or, like long-range communication. We still bring the giant fucking radio. Yeah, you have a radio man who's your adjutant right now and has to bring the radio pack, which is fucking heavy and has, like, your handset, the wireless telegraph. Uh, actually, the wireless telegraph is a heliograph, so that's that's almost like a, a signal laser. That's like mirrors and sunlight. But hey, that only works when there's light. And it's also uh, heavy. Yeah, uh, so, it. like, bringing a wireless set with you is, like, a huge deal. Um, rechargeable batteries right. did actually exist in this timeline. Um, so you can buy a battery pack, which is basically like a battery pack filled with a couple NICADs. But that's also fucking heavy and expensive. Yeah, I'm not gonna... I only got one XO. Mm-hmm. She'll kill me if I try to get anybody else. She's very attached to me. Very. Yeah, you have a little bit of a, a, a creepy thing going on there, because she's got, like, stalker and stuff. She has this thing, stalker. And I'm the, I'm the uh, subject of her stalking. I said, and, uh, and we, oh, yeah, and we're not we're not shy to say that that she does some stuff that would be in our in our modern times, quote unquote, problematic. Yeah, but she's she's good she has she physically hit you a couple times, but everybody lets it slide because they're good to, I'm, I'm not going to talk shit about the EXO. She's scary. <laughs> uh, our said, captain uh, jumped out of a plane with a parachute, <laughs> and she's okay to hit him. I don't think I want to mess with that lady. I said, like, I wanted to, I wanted to build that um that uh what's the word I'm thinking about that um that polar opposite. Mm-hmm. See, like um I'm probably like at some point gonna when I buy elemental affinity, I'm probably gonna give her poison just because I think it'd be crazy and weird, scary. Yeah, poison makes it fun. Yeah. Though uh, we we, well, we said like, this this is this is funny. The the village scenario was like the one time having a lot of wood magic could be super helpful. I, she finally got it, and now she's gonna get poisoned because she has been tainted. She did actually get poisoned. She got over it though. I rolled like a one. On the, I rolled a one on the toxic damage, and then she got over it. And I was like, hmm, hmm. Oh well, it wasn't. A well, big deal. it was good because she only had like fifteen wounds, and she was at like fourteen. I'm like, please don't kill my exo. Like, yeah, she got healed a little complete? bit because the corman, which is something yeah. that like um, we don't role play the corman a lot because Marth doesn't really talk or interact with him unless you need something. So. Um, you're so you're, the one who you're gets weird, fought. and the rule actually says that you don't you don't have to role play your own companion, but you do it anyway because you don't mind. I'm weird. Yeah, yeah. I like to, I don't mind talking to myself. I don't like get, I don't mind giving my exo qualities. Though, as the GM, I'm sure I, I occasionally chime in and be like, I bet your exo is doing this right now. And, and usually, like, you're like, Yeah, no, sounds right. Um, so, but I've I've tried like, to role play the corman a little bit more. Is like he. he He's seen some stuff. He's a, he's a little bit of your jaded, sarcastic guy. He's like, um, I think this is one of the reasons why Marth uh, finally decided to give him quirks because, like, honestly, like quirks like, honestly do help you like kind of figure out a. Oh yeah, no, um, because the quirk. It's funny. The quirk system is is pure Valkyria Chronicles. It's your potentials basically. So it's yeah. like a hundred and ten percent. It's like here's that weird personality stuff that makes you you. So like like you mentioned, you're so like. Your exo has like, like stalker and sadistic, so she has to roll willpower checks to not inflict pain on people. Yep. She's also a stunning beauty and has trauma and necrophobia, so uh, don't put her around a lot of fucking dead bodies. She will not uh, handle it well. Oh yeah, you don't think you've ever actually used stunning beauty to stun anybody yet? No, no, because well, like hanging out in the back and 
Well, yeah, because she's got. She probably has a hard time keeping up. You've given her the radio pack. Those things are fucking heavy. Yeah. G- your your weight limit is very pronounced in this game by design. Actually, I should probably actually like measure out like her what her actual weight's at because I don't give her like a lot of stuff because she does have to carry the radio backpack. Mm-hmm. But I probably actually fully calculate that out. Yeah. Um, and you, for instance, we've mentioned before, you've got, um, what is it, unkempt, so you always look shabby. Yeah. Uh, but you're also honorable. Doesn't, yeah, as I said, uh, the, um, unkempt doesn't come up a lot. Because, I try to make it come up occasionally, but it's, it, like, around, like, mostly it's a role-playing whatnot, thing I, where occasionally, more than once, people have looked at you disapprovingly. Yeah. I'm like, whatever. Because I also got camaraderie and natural leader. Yeah, that's right. I'm friendly. That's your others. So you're... You're personable as fuck. Mm, I just look cool. Uh, y- yeah. You are the very model of a modern major general. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm in the middle of a fucking war. I don't have time to look good. I got to save my men and keep everyone fucking alive. Yeah, you're, you're the okay. you're the like the one guy in the unit who's got that permanent five o'clock shadow. Mm-hmm. And a cup of coffee. Where'd you get that mug? Coffee. Magic. Well, now you don't have to explain because, like we said, you have a recovery unit now, and I even mentioned in. In game, like one of their jobs is everybody needs a everybody needs a thermos. Boom, they're there. They're there. They're there with a band aid and a thermos full of coffee. And occasionally, like I said, they're like um tiny Saint Bernards, and they'll uh not like tiny, but they're like people Saint Bernards. They'll have a keg of beer, or emergency beer ration. So that does remind me, I wanted to. I haven't done it because we've had a busy day today because obviously we're prepping to record and stuff. But I wanted to add an NPC profile for quote unquote combat dogs. So you can literally have stats for your diamond dog. Yeah! Get me a diamond dog. Get a wolf. Get a wolf. Knife. Oh, but they're probably... Well, actually, no, there's wild dogs in Africa. There's yes, there wolf, are. But, but there are plenty of canine species. Yep. Species, though. I don't yeah, know. There's, a, there's a decent... Well, mostly because you can also turn them into magic animals pretty easy. But there's a decent number of... Uh, stat blocks for various animal types like uh birds of prey um on my step back there is the african golden wolf nice. which is also known as the egyptian jackal or gray jackal 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 it's a jackal jackal uh let's see here it is 72 percent gray wolf and 20 percent ethiopian opium wolf. Mm, i want one Megan, are you saying anything or is quiet? No, I was just humming for a second. Yeah, no, that's interesting. Um, I'm immediately reminded of Liquid Snake. In the Middle East, we don't hunt foxes. We hunt jackals. Ah, I'm Liquid Snake. Brother! Brother! Metal Gear! Can we talk? I'm, I'm just, every time I hear about Liquid Snake, I always just think about the end of Metal Gear Solid. It's like, for some odd reason, top of a burning Metal Gear, we're both shirtless. Let's let's punch fight. Yes. <laughs> and he falls off and doesn't die, even though you will definitely die if you fall off. I love Liquid Snake. Liquid's great. He's a great character. Yeah. But, like, as I said, like, I can easily see, like, Ever gonna like you can consider like majors of war like, doing some stuff on missiles, but I can definitely see some Metal Gear sh- like popping up. Like later. yeah, I've thought a little bit about how there would because this is a, this is definitely written as a kind of quote unquote magitech setting where magic and technology blend. Like there's mm-hmm. either there is a magical substitute or there is a more advanced version of something available to mages. Like um actually there's an equipment ad in there that you probably want to look up at some point. The Ethereum torch, which is like I did my research and like. So at this point in time, oxyacetylene torches existed, but that's oh. kind of a whole thing. So I'm like, uh, oh, wait, right, magic. Um, so you can get an Ethereum torch, which is if you plug it into an Ethereum power source, you basically have a tiny plasma torch, which can be has an adjustable nozzle, so you can use it for both um, cutting or welding together and stuff. Um, and so it's it's a little expensive, it's a little heavy, it, bring, it eats your power a lot, but um, it's also really good at what it does, so... If you wanted to do that instead of actually going out of your way to be like, and I want to do an oxyacetylene torch, so I need to carry the tanks and the stuff and the oxygen pumps and all that, you can just be magic at it. It's the same with like the wearable the wearable radios. It's like, yeah, no, like y- you guys are magic. You can carry a, a small radio set, which is very Metal Gear inspired. I'm thinking of mm-hmm. Metal Gear Solid Three, mm-hmm. with like how the setup is. You know that you got to twist the knobs and like hold it to your throat and ear and stuff. 
snake. And there's 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 quite a few bits of technology which is literally just like yeah the only way to power this is to plug it into your mobility unit like um the mine detector is that way the metal detector the 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 handheld uh, search lamp is like that just because battery technology is a little weird and if you buy the heavy ass battery pack you can power most of these devices without needing an, an Ethereum core but then you're carrying like a hundred kilos of batteries that, that's kind of... it's fucking heavy it's because it really would be like this is. This is how technology goes. You guys are elites for being mages and being able to have access to all this stuff that regular infantry doesn't. On the other hand, most infantry is happy to see you because you're magic. I bring the boom. Uh, yeah. No, oh, I shouldn't. Okay, let me adjust my microphone because I had to lean back in my chair. But yeah, no. So we talk about mages of war a lot again. What? That's a very loudly boom in my microphone. Uh, someday I'll adjust my position so I can actually kick back and relax in the chair that I love to do. But anyway, yeah. The <sighs> the genre stuff's fun. Like, I really love the setting, but I want to kind of see, like, what happens, like, when we start getting access to, like, more technology. That's what I'm saying. I'm playing Modern Warfare. I'm playing uh, Modern Warfare. I was like, man, I wish I had an underbarrel grenade launcher <laughs> and, um... Yeah, and you didn't have to do what everybody who's not Marth right now has to do and, and take an action to fish a rifle grenade out of your out of your pack, put it in your gun, load the blank, shoot it, mm-hmm. take it all out, and do it again. Yeah, no, it's so like, a yes. And like just because like I love modding. Like, I really do. I haven't been doing it so much in Mages of War because I've been trying to not um burden my character with stuff. Because uh, my character got a lot going on. Um, I literally have a legend. My character sheet is literally 11 pages right now. Yeah, and you guys actually have talked about this occasionally spending XP. Both you and Marth are, are kind of like, uh, I don't know if my character would really do that, right? Like, he, he was thinking about buying grappling, but then he eventually decided not to because he's not a super close quarters guy. I'm thinking about buying grappling. No, if I have time to grapple, I'm going to hit someone with my fucking sword. Yes, now that we've established there's a rule that technically you can do that non-lethally. You can just yeah. smack people with the flat. You'll mm-hmm. You'll suck it up. But so, like, like a lot of the modding is for guns, and, like, again, I don't use my gun a lot, so I'm like, mm. Well, I did add, one of them won't have help you because you already have a longsword, which is defensive, but I did, I have been thinking about more about melee mods because I'm realizing that there is actually a lot of support for melee in my game and a lot of options, so, eh, why not? Why not, why not be more free and give players more options to find the, the right play style for them, right? That's, that's, I think, especially for a game that is normally so theoretically anyway regimented and controlled like there's a lot of the fluff writing and by the way there's shitloads of fluff for my game uh in case you didn't realize there's like hold on let me actually pull up the document and see how many how many pages i have written in just the fluff sections but there's a lot of wiggle room to be less military than actually required because especially because of the time period but you guys are mages you're magic you have special powers and like you're super valuable and it's it's really hard for conventional military guys to just tell you to, to you know, fuck off and wear your uniform straight, right? Because if if you don't do your damnedest, you're like, that's that's a big blow because technically mages are worth a lot and there's not a lot of you. So they really don't want to throw you in prison or shoot you or anything. Yep. Like for you guys to get to get course marshaled or God forbid, get the firing squad, you'd have to really screw up. Mm hmm. Not that that's still obviously not a risk to, like, if a GM needs to keep order, but still, it's, like, that's for, like, major fuck-ups. That's for if you did accidentally blow up Major Mustache somewhere, quote-unquote accidentally. I said that's if you, act quote-unquote, accidentally blew up Major Mustache somewhere or something, right? That that's be, like, you know, if you, that would have to be either you deliberately killed an officer or you fucked up so bad you accidentally killed an officer. That would be, like, "Mm, there's gonna be an investigation about this. Um... But yeah, so like, I feel like with the rigid conditions of the military type setting, there needs to be some of that freedom that player characters can can still be themselves. Uh, that's why you got the quirk stuff going on. I'm gonna say, like, yeah, I'm gonna say, like, when you're on the front, sometimes uh, rules are bent. Things can look the other way. You know, things are harsh. Uh, It's flexible. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure when I was at the capital, I wasn't unkept. Yeah, pretty sure when I was at the capital, I wasn't unkept. Uh, straighten that uniform, shave that box shadow, grease that hair. Look impeccable. But as soon as I get back to the front, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm So slouch. let's see. Starting on page 161 of 194 is when fluff starts. 
So that's a good 30 pages of fluff. Oh, yeah, that reminds me. I need to buy fucking flares. Yeah, you do. I kind of want to flare gun, but I don't... T- technically, you scavenged a lantern. You you captured an enemy lantern. Mm-hmm. So that's that's the other than the fact that you guys both bought night vision because you had to do some stealthy stuff early on, and um, with his mask bonus now, um, Ulrich doesn't need light. Basically, he eats the penalty for anything, but I think like complete pitch darkness with his bonus now. So long as he's wearing his super creepy gas mask. Yeah, uh, Martha said he's gonna be fucking creepy, and I'm like, okay. Yeah, he's he's decided to lean into the fact that he's. Uh, his his character background is isolate, so he grew up in like a a remote fishing or wood cutting village somewhere. Uh, probably a mining village. He's an earth mage, and so he's he's not a like we said he's not a people person, but he's real good at surviving in the woods. Like God forbid, say one of you guys gets shot down or something. Um, he's the character you want on your side to like hike your way back to to your own lines. Uh, whereas if like you're you're the smarty pants talky man. Like if if you're in a heated battle with the enemy and you want to like try and negotiate your way out or something, that's what you're good for. Mm-hmm. In terms of skill spread. And yeah, flare gun and just regular flares. Yes, you can buy both uh, flares in like various sets. They burn for a while, and um, they're waterproof but, like, too. Yeah, flare guns is something I want. To, I need to sign summer from the air. Flares on the ground is just when I need. I need, like I go into a cave or something. I guess. Yeah. Oh, or if you wanted to mark targets, like, hey, shoot the red flare. Uh, smoke also works for that. Not that I think anybody's ever bought a smoke grenade in this game yet. You see, like, here's the thing. I'm at gear. Like, now, like, I'm thinking about, like, God, I really wish I had these things for situations. I'm like, yeah, no, I might need color. Like, I might not need smoke for, like, um, I'm not going to throw it at the enemy and be like, aha, now you can't see because more likely than not, I'm going to be charging into said smoke to cut a fucker. I know. I need. I need like signaling options and shit. I need like. Uh, there is also illuminated dye. You can literally buy magic glow in the dark dye. Yeah, but you really have to throw that in water if I remember correctly. But that's a uh, for like air, ground. Like I'm thinking for like because like I said, we haven't gone out to uh, we haven't gone out for the water yet. So I'm thinking for land and air. So like for land, it'd probably be regular flares. For air, it'd be the flare gun. Maybe a smoke grenade for if I need to do signal. I have attack red, so I could probably just like literally clip them on my game somewhere. Yeah, you you but, specifically bought the tactical harness, so you have the you have the full blown you know hard point harness with all the different space to clip stuff. Have you bought any belt pouches yet? Are there belt pouches? Yeah, there's belt pouches. Oh wait, that's in the isn't that I think that's in the advanced. No, here. belt pouches in the regular. What is it? What? Oh, actually, I mean the belt. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh. What? Uh, I need to get me, like, four belt pouches, like, immediately. Yep. Str- strap into your bandolier. Recover. Anything that weighs less than a kilogram can fit in a pouch. Once during an encounter, you can spend... You can recover an item from a pouch as a free action. Uh, yeah, I need to get me some of those. They're plentiful. They're pretty easy. Mm-hmm. One, two, hell yeah. Let me get me, like, three or four flares in there. Nice stuff. Yeah, there's Maybe a lot of stuff that because you guys are flying, you don't need, like, you don't need a ladder, usually. Nope. You guys literally fly. Oh, there's a three meter elevation, I take a half action move to move straight up. Because you can do that. Oh, that reminds me, Marth bought Builder for his companions, so he's carrying construction tools. That poor son of a bitch. The corpsman. Because he's a carrying a trauma kit, a regular med kit, and I think surgeon's tools, and now he's also carrying construction tools. He was just covered in bags. Yeah, yeah. I'm we'll probably talk tomorrow. I'm like, Mark, calculate your guy's weight and how much he can actually fucking carry. I did that too. Uh, like you guys, God forbid, you guys don't need crampons. <laughs> Not in this campaign. In the other one, sure, but in this one, no. Uh, oh, you might want to buy some engine grease soon. That's one of those things that I think you always say. Gosh, I wish we had some engine grease, but then you don't buy it. I forget. Like I love gear porn. Like I really do. And this is like this is one of those things that Mage of War definitely tickles. Especially since Omega keeps like, oh yeah, I could just add this. And he's like, boom, I added something. I'm like, yes, boy. Yeah, because yeah, I'm like I said, it's an eternal beta. I'm constantly working through stuff. Like, um, I added uh, because I was just thinking about it for something. And I'm like, uh, does this exist? So I added a garrote as like a tool. Um, not that either. Yeah, of I just saw that. I was like, oh god. Not that either of you care about oh, that because you're just, not grappling. Like, oh but it's like, no, this makes sense for this time period. They that that was a thing that existed. So I'm just like, yeah, let's just throw it in. Um, it you know. It if you're playing a grappling build and you're playing a sneaky build, sure, why not? 
Like, um, grapnel is also a thing you guys don't need. You also don't need a lighter anymore. I'm still gonna keep it on, because you never know. True. And I think I think it's actually said you can, like, slot it into... Yeah, it fits in your grooming kit. Yeah. Sure. Which is also why I bought that. For gun, flares... Let's get four flares. Yeah, there's a couple... Like, you, none of you guys are playing mechanics or technical units, so, like, you're not loaded down with toolkits and stuff like the E-Tool or the Matic. Uh, I think you had to give back your... Oh, here's a good here's a, here's a good thing if you're jotting stuff down because I am that for this game especially I am that kind of GM when it comes to tools. So do you have a do you have a pad and pen set? Yes, I okay, remember good. I got when um we went to go out for the survey. That's right. Yeah, that's good because that could actually come up. And I, I aim that much to be like, like if you're at base, yeah, no, you can rust up some papers. If you're standing in the middle of the woods and like, do you have a pad on you? And you're like, no. Then like, okay. I guess you're drawn in the dirt with a stick. <laughs> um, also, because nobody's playing the medic, drugs don't come up. Like, other than the anti venom which I think you're going to buy. But, like, no, I don't think anybody has any painkillers or combat stims or anything on them. Though it's funny, I remember, I d uh, because your first character, despite being very active, had kind of a shaky will score. You, you failed some fear tests a lot um, and passed out at least once. And that's why I added smelling salts as literally a way to not pass out more. Now we're just looking at the gear list and thinking about stuff. I like I like gear. Yeah. And like I said, the 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 point of the game is to give players the flexibility to accomplish goals in creative ways. Like you may not think to yourself, "Oh, it's not necessarily important that I list what's all in the groove and kit." But hey, then you never know. Like because mages can have different aspects. You might be a metal mage and be like, "Oh shit, I've got a th you know if I have my grooming kit, I have a needle in there." I can actually, you know, make that super strong, or I can use magnetism to move it. I can do stuff with that. Um, same with like threads and stuff. Like you, so the kind of the point is that like to to think about using your abilities to do interesting stuff, mm -hmm. and that's then that's why some stuff is marked specifically like mages' tools because no, there isn't a good reason for um, anybody but a mage to be carrying basically a set of archaeological tools with them. But maybe you are. Because you don't know, I could turn this into an Indiana Jones adventure at any time. Any time. Because, as I said, like, we, we kind of had when we went um, underground. Mm -hmm. It's like, yeah, we're this forward, and ruins with spirits and murals. And, okay. We, like, really didn't get deep into that, but it was there. Yeah, it was an option, but you the way you guys approached the scenario, we, it, it, that kind of, you kind of moved away from that being a quote-unquote uh, risk. I fuck with no spirit. I want to fuck with the spirits. Fuck it, man. But yeah, all right. So we're about at, we're about two and a half hours. I figure we're kind of running out of steam on the topics. Uh, did you have anything oh, yeah, else sure. you wanted to talk about today? No, not really. I really want to talk about uh, Mages of War and Modern Warfare. That's good. That's another, oh, yeah. I feel like I feel like that's another what's up in the bag then. Oh yeah. All right. Well, yeah. Let's go ahead and wind down, and we'll get back to stuff. You can get back to playing uh, all gillied up because that's a really fun mission. Like, I can get I was, back I to do other stuff. But as I said. Like, but I think I feel like I need to actually focus on this because sure, this is hard. Uh, technically, I did actually finally, because I had a $10 credit for from Amazon because I pre-ordered Kingdom Hearts 3. It was only good for this month. So I uh, finally did buy Ace Combat 7, but I haven't had time to play it yet. So maybe I will and talk about that some. But uh, upcoming this week, at some point, going to get that uh, Extella link. So uh, we're going to have to talk about that a lot. Uh, maybe we'll talk about that on, on SGV, on Let's Talk FGA, or maybe we'll talk about it on WhatsApp. I don't know yet. We'll see what the, sh maybe the we'll various shows are like. Probably do both. Probably. We're like that. Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. We'll just go ahead and wind down and, you know, we'll talk about stuff when we talk about stuff. That's the beauty of What's Up. So, uh, if you like this episode, give it a like. If you, uh, have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. Like, do you, because it, it's a PS Plus game this month, you know? Anybody else playing Modern Warfare? Have any thoughts on, you know, this 12 year old game? You can also hit us up on our Discord. That's always a really great place to get in touch with us. Uh, and of course, if you are new here and have not already, please uh, subscribe to the channel. It's a great way to keep track of our videos. And consider hitting that bell for notifications so you always know when we post a new video. And uh, like it says at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early in audio format right as soon as we're done editing them. And uh, it's a real convenient way to listen. Plus, you can uh, listen to our actual play backlog in audio format, which may or may not be easier than, you know, listening to a two or three hour long YouTube video. I don't know. You tell me. 
Shrug. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's everything. So uh, we'll say goodbye for now, and we'll uh, see you in the next video. Later's. <laughs>